bunch of guys, almost half the roster, making their first road trip tonight. Very close in overall wins. The Sooners with those seven national titles, including one under Supes in 2000. Tennessee believes they should have a couple of Heisman Trophy winners. Peyton Manning and Johnny Majors are both runners up. A.J. Johnson, leader of Tennessee. He's trying to assure these young guys they're up to this challenge. Oklahoma won the toss, deferred. So Nick Hodgson to boot it away. And like most of his kicks, they sail deep or out of the end zone. And so we'll see this volunteer offense and Justin Worley to work. Can he get enough protection to make plays tonight, Kirk? Well, this is going to be the thing to watch. You have two true freshmen starting on this offensive line, a makeshift group. They're young, they're inexperienced. They're going to be great, but they're just young at this point, going up against a very veteran group from Oklahoma. Justin Worley has a lot of confidence, a lot of, a lot of moxies, showing a lot of presence this year in that pocket as the leader of this offense. And I think it's very important that they start fast. You heard 62 to 3 is the way Oklahoma's outscored their opponents in the first half. The senior Marlon Lane to the right of Worley. And right away they hand it off on the edge trying to get Oklahoma stretched. And Alton Pig Howard is going to be swarmed and dropped for a loss. A negative play for the Volunteers to start things. And the crowd is into it already. Well, this is a great job of containing. This Tennessee offense, so this offense wants to get the ball out of the hands quickly from Worley, get the ball on the perimeter. They feel very confident that their receivers and running backs match up well, but Tennessee that time struggled to get to the outside thanks to Jordan Evans doing a good job of containing Pig Alton, or Pig Howard, rather. And they lose seven yards on the opening play. Worley back throws quickly near side. Marquez North makes the catch, but a sure tackle and a short game. And Marquez North is one of the impact players tonight for Tennessee. 6-4. They're going to try to do a good job of getting the ball up in the air so we can go up and over some of the Oklahoma corners. Alton Howard on, on the other side, number two, and then Zach Sanchez, an All-American type of corner, number 15, and Eric Stryker, one of the best pass rushers in college football, will be trying to harass Justin Worley the whole game. Let's see if some of those Chick-fil-A impact players can get after Worley here. Third down and 13. Worley is protected. Fires far side. You see the arm strength, but it's behind North. Julian Wilson defending and a three and out for the Volunteers. This is actually a ball that they're trying to throw on the back shoulder. And he's just the timing's off just a bit that time. It's a good decision and a good idea. And that time, Worley, early in this game, just trying to settle in, get his timing down with North. Just missed a, a big gain, a significant gain there on third down. Matt Dar in the punt. Special teams has been a problem area for the Volunteers. Big edge in that department of the Sooners tonight, you'd think, coming in. Sterling Shepard taking over the kick return roll. The receiver back at his 35-yard line. Comes up and makes a fair catch at the 43. So Trevor Knight, some good field position to operate with. Can he build on that? Tremendous Sugar Bowl game and a good start to 2014. Yeah, tonight just his eighth start. I mean, because of the way he played against Alabama, I think people forget he's just a sophomore. He, he's he, last year he played early, he had some injuries, came back late in the year, had the great Sugar Bowl that everybody's been talking about, and is off to a great start this year. Tremendous quickness, kind of a dual threat guy, and runs an offense that's really geared more to run the football more than anything. But he also has an ability to throw the football. He's got a big arm. You see a talent rotation of tailbacks along with Knight in the backfield. All of them sophomores or freshmen. Samaj P. Ryan, number 32, the true freshman is in there along with Keith Ford. And they hand it off. And on the left is Ford, the sophomore from Cypress, Texas. Kind of a bruising runner. A.J. Johnson, one of the better linebackers in the SEC, number 45. He will be all over the field tonight, and he's going to have to have a big game for Tennessee. Tennessee walked down their safety. They had eight men in the box. They're almost going to dare Trevor Knight and Oklahoma to throw the football. They're determined, led by A.J. Johnson, to stop the running game. On second down, Knight's got it. Rolls out in the flat. Finds Jerron Neal, who's got some space, and has a first down at the Volunteer 45. And I think Oklahoma realizes that's something they want to do, so they go to play action right away, a little bit of misdirection, and get the ball out to Neal off of that naked look, and good job of getting Tennessee out of position. Move to six. They're going to play fast. This is Keith Ford cutting to the right. Dives forward to the Volunteer 40-yard line. Curtis Majit made the tackle. Can't afford to miss any tackles. You know, talk all week about the crowd noise and how they're going to handle adversity. It's a young team. 
one area that they feel very confident is Machette at 56 and A.J. Johnson. These linebackers are very, very talented group and guys that have played a lot of football. They've got to be able to provide some leadership tonight. Here's Louisiana Tech and Tulsa Sooners right down the field, taking three plays, 81 yards to silence the crowd last week. And they're on the march again. And second and five. Hand it off and breaking free is Ford into the secondary. Hit hard, but not before he gains first down yardage to the 27. Well, they, they are crowding this line of scrimmage, but right now they're losing the battle up front. Again, Oklahoma has a decisive advantage in the trenches, Chris, not just with their defensive line, but with a veteran offensive line going up against a young Tennessee defensive line. That's why you see the balls walking up the safeties and getting those linebackers involved, but they can crease you with these backs, and you just saw an example of it right there. Some versatile skill players for the Sooners. They can play fast and not substitute on play action. They throw it down to Blake Bell, the former quarterback, who shifted over to tight end. Just off his fingertips, well covered. He caught a touchdown pass last week. And there's a great job of recognizing a wheel route by Todd Kelly. This guy's a true freshman, has a bright future. His dad played for the Vols, and he's being asked on the road here early in his career to play a lot of football. That was a great job of not just recognizing it, but as a safety, turning his head around, finding the football, and almost came up with an interception. So on second and ten, Alex Ross, the speedy back, the sophomore from Jinx, Oklahoma, checks in. Knight looks over the middle, fires a dart, complete to Bell, and he bulldozes down to the 11-yard line. How about Trevor Knight here? Just, just buying a little bit of time. He kind of backed off. He felt the pressure and just kind of bailed on it because he knew that he had his tight end, Blake Bell, against soft coverage. And first down, Sooners playing fast. End off running left, and there's a hit behind the line of scrimmage as Johnson came flying up. He's uh, not afraid to show how he feels on the field. No. <laughs> well, Adam Shedd tried to get to him, but this is the play before. See how he just buys time? He's just backing up, knows that the Jets going to get to him, but he knows he has his tight end as well. That's the experience that Trevor Knight has gained and the confidence that he now has as a quarterback. You're right. A.J. Johnson lowering the boom there. That was a heck of a play. And all starts with a... Effective first down play for this Tennessee defense if they're going to have a chance to slow down the Sooners. One yard loss on that play. On second down. Loss is hit again. So Tennessee's defense looking stout. Corey Vereen, the end, sets up a third and long now for Knight. And Chris, this is a play that Trevor Knight will go back to. You see how Vereen collapses down? He's just reading that. He actually misread that play. Next time he gets that look, Trevor Knight will pull the football, and if he would have pulled it there, he goes around the corner and walks into the end zone. A misread, but they'll come back to it later. Ninth play of the drive is the first third down for the Sooners. Knight. Had time, now is flushed, cannot escape, and he's dropped for a loss. Are you Call that a victory for the Tennessee defense. No question. With a young team on the road in this environment, with after a three and out from your own offense, right away Oklahoma's eating up big chunks of yards. That was an outstanding job of coverage, Chris, downfield. That's who really got the sack. Jordan Williams came in and got it, but the coverage was great. It contained Trevor Knight, who's athletic enough to scramble, kept him in the pocket, and they forced the field goal. Michael Honey kept very reliable, the active scoring leader by far in the FBS. No problem. So the Sooners get good field position, move it 45 yards in nine plays, but Tennessee will take it. Back and would not expect a return here. And they don't get one. So, Kirk, Worley. And the Vols lost seven yards last time on first down to put them way in trouble on yeah. the sticks. Chris, I think they're going to have a hard time establishing the line of scrimmage with the battle up front. So I think the game comes down to Justin Worley and his ability to read coverage, make quick decisions, and get the ball out of his hands before the pressure gets to him. Again, he's got, whether it's Pitt Howard, Marquez North, Jason Kroon, Josh Smith, they have some athletes on the perimeter. They've just got to get the ball out to them as quick as they can before that pressure gets to them. Got a very hyped athlete in the backfield there. Jalen Hurd, number one, the five-star tailback recruit out of Hendersonville, Tennessee, but a short gain as Dominique Alexander hit him. This Oklahoma defense is reminiscent 
of some of the old Oklahoma defenses. When I say old, when Mike Stoops was here, and they were chasing BCS championships. They're very physical and athletic on that defensive line and the linebackers. Second and seven. This is an offense that will struggle, perhaps, with this crowd noise tonight. Really shifting the play and trying to change up the protection call, perhaps. He needs Devon Young to go in motion. Flush out, throws on the run, a nice completion up near midfield. And the catch is made by Josh Smith, the sophomore from Knoxville. Well, this is a great job by Justin Worley. He comes off his primary to the right, buys a little bit of time, avoids the pressure by Ndue, and then finds his man, Josh Smith. There's a great example of the poise that Worley's been playing with this year. That's a big-time play. And all the volunteer receivers need to step up. Von Pearson, junior college player, out with an ankle injury. Really pressure throws on first down incomplete. He was hammered very quickly just after he got the ball away by Geno Grissom. Right now they're trying to attack in uh, inside on this defense, taking a receiver, go to the outside and make a quick read. But look how quick you've got to get the ball out of your hands. I mean Grissom's on one side, Strikers on the other, and you're talking about two of the better pass rushers in the country on one defense. Like Jason Kroon to make that play as a receiver if you're the quarterback. And second and ten, Smith comes in motion. They throw it to him behind the line. The Sooners pursue and hit him back behind the line for a loss. A striker, Chris. Everybody thinks about him as a pass rusher because he had three sacks against Alabama. But this guy can play out in space. And he lowers the boom in a hurry. Very, very versatile, and Mike Stoops has gone from a 4-2-5 defense to a 3-4 to get both these outside linebackers on the field at the same time. Third and 13, Worley can expect some pressure again. Steps away, looks downfield and throws complete for a first down at the Oklahoma 40-yard line. That's Pig Howard. I tell you what, this is again a young offensive line that's holding up okay. That's third and 13. He gets pressure from the nose, Jordan Phillips, but he steps up into the pressure, avoids Phillips, and then finds North crossing across the middle. That's a big conversion there on third and long. You fake it to Hurd. Hit from the blind side. Ball comes loose. And the Volunteers scrapping for it, but it's Oklahoma ball. Quentin Hayes made the recovery. Worley never saw it coming. You notice that third down conversion. Oklahoma did not blitz. This time, right after the conversion, they bring the blitz from the blind side with a young offensive line. Nobody picks up the safety, Quentin Hayes. And Justin Worley did not recognize it. Sometimes with tempo, Chris, it's hard to be able to recognize the coverage and the pressure you might face. Worley never even saw Hayes coming. He disguised it, waited to the very last second, and blindsided Justin Worley for the big turnover. Hayes, the senior, the leader of that secondary, forces and recovers the fumble. And again, good field position for Oklahoma at the 46. We fake it to Ross. Knight now pressured. Shows the escapability and just throws it away on the sidelines. Here's the Chick-fil-A impact players for the Sooners. Well, Keith Ford leads the uh, committee of backs. You'll see all three of them. But Ford, I think, at this point is the man up front. Sterling Shepard is outstanding. By far the best receiver for the Sooners. They'll look to try to get him the football. We've talked a lot already about A.J. Johnson and his leadership. And Cam Sutton, number 23. These corners are going to be on an island a lot tonight playing man-to-man. -man. They've got to be able to hold up against not just Shepard, but the rest of the OU receivers. You're exactly right, Kirk. You see it right now at the top of your screen. On second and ten, Knight keeps it. He's quick, as you said, Kirk, but he couldn't get away from Derek Barnett, one of the many true freshmen playing on this volunteer defense. Yeah, true freshman making a start in this environment. He's out of Brentwood Academy in Nashville. How about the recognition? He's on a stunt. He went from the outside to the inside, but if he doesn't make that play, Trevor Knight picks up a first down and probably some more yards. 
Volunteer front seven stepping up so far. Seems need 11 on third down. Fire the strike complete. KJ Young, the freshman. Knight got hit hard after the completion. Yeah, they're going to go tempo here. We're going to show you real quick. Watch the pressure. Watch the toughness of Trevor Knight. He knows what's coming. It's the second time we've seen him hang on to that football to the last moment before Williams gets to him and he gets the first down. Now they fake it to Ross. Knight rolls. Fires back across the middle. And a nice catch and a high dart he is made there by Shepard, his go-to receiver. Tight coverage from Cam Sutton, but an accurate throw. And he came to the back side because his coverage was so good on the play side. He had to look back, and of course, that's his favorite target. Anytime he gets into trouble, he's usually looking to Sterling Shepard. Here goes the hyperspeed attack. It's Neal is dropped behind the line by Michael Williams. If you're not familiar with Oklahoma, part of the reason they go tempo is because it gets them into rhythm. But like many offenses in college football, they want to wear down this Tennessee defense. They're pretty thin on the defensive line. They want to wear that defensive line out and be able to run and throw the ball. But that's why they're going tempo tonight. You can see the success they had against Louisiana Tech and also last week in their game against Tulsa. It's Key Ford checks back into the left. But Knight drops straight back. Now flips it to the back. And Ford with running room. Motoring to the end zone. Touchdown, Oklahoma. They cash in the turnover for a quick six. All of these young backs are excellent receivers. That's a 23-yard touchdown. And a blown coverage. Tennessee looked confused from the formation from the outset of that play. They brought pressure. And Trevor Knight recognized the pressure. There was nobody there after the blitz to pick up Keith Ford, and he just walks into the end zone. Took him less than two minutes to turn the fumble recovery by Quentin Hayes into a touchdown. This is what Tennessee fans were afraid of. Knight and the Sooners are rolling early in Norman. championship and shut out Oklahoma 17 nothing down in Miami never allowed more than seven points in any game this season you can see what was going on back then oh, look at that Richard of Oz yeah. and Gary wow I didn't know Marvin Gaye was no idea in that year no this is the first regular season meeting we'll show you the second meeting in the Orange Bowl a little bit later on so Worley and the volunteers back to work but suddenly in a 10 point hole after the quick drive following the fumble recovery can be an overwhelming place to play even for experienced teams much less a really young team like Tennessee the stadium striped by sections excellent crown discipline tonight the yeah, terms are very yeah. Yeah. Except the student section they do what they want <laughs> Hudson this time not as deep and they're going to give it a shot, but Devrin Young hammered hard at the 15. He goes down right there, loses the ball. Oklahoma says it's another turnover. The Tauri Bird provided the shot. No signal yet. Well, the headlinesman gave a signal really quick, saying it was a Tennessee football, but we'll see what happens when the ball is down at the bottom. There. An SEC yeah, there crew is. here in Norman, and the... Volunteers can breathe a sigh of relief as they do hold on to possession here. Let's go back to the touchdown and a middle air here. You see man to man across the board for Tennessee. Then you see your linebackers and your safeties. Two guys making their first start on the road. The linebackers, the safety blitzes, and watch what the linebacker does. He also blitzes. So you leave a running back all along. Reeves Maven came through the middle. Todd Kelly blitzed. Nobody was left there for Keith Ford. First down, they fake it to Lane. And the slant is completed. 
Josh Malone, another one of those talented true freshmen, a five-star recruit in Gallatin, Tennessee. Big future. Well, he's 6'3", 204 pounds. This is what we keep talking about when we say you're going to like the Tennessee skill, whether it's Malone or Smith or Howard or North or Prune. They feel very confident, again, that they can find some openings and throw the football with Justin Worley. That time, nice job. I think he started to look downfield for the hit, and he was lucky to hold on to the football. He had a monster spring game. Six catches, a buck 81, three touchdowns. You get the Tennessee fans excited. So a first down throw. They drop it off to Lane. Cannot break a tackle. Down to Heather Cox. Guys, you're talking about this Tennessee youth. More than half the travel roster has never played a collegiate road game. As intimidating and as loud as this environment is, they are calm, poised, and focused. And a note on the Tennessee offense, they're going to try to go side to side on the perimeter. So Herbie, look for those wide receivers to get some action here. Another you see number 55 there, Coleman Thomas. First time ever on an airplane to come to this game. It's a lot of new stuff for the guys in white <laughs> and orange tonight. There's a second down handoff and a short gain by Lane. It'll set up third down. See, one of the adjustments right now with what Mike Stoops is doing is he's getting more aggressive and blitzing. You see Stryker there. They walked him out over the slot. And then as the ball snapped, they're bringing him. You're also seeing Quentin Hayes, number 10, the safety. They're bringing him quite a bit for Mike Stoops on the blind side of Justin Worley. That's an adjustment right away with that young line. Get aggressive and try to bring pressure. Empty backfield on third and five. Sooners showing pressure off the edge. And then back out. Rush only three, but still get to Worley. And Dulaway made the sack. And Tennessee's going to punt again. That, that's Coleman Thomas, a true freshman, the right tackle, matched up against a man. Just a just a war daddy in Ndule, a senior, 6'3", 290 pounds. That's a tough matchup. And, and Worley knows he's got to be able to get the ball out of his hands, especially on third down. Look at this. That's Ndule. And you're a true freshman. Yeah, I was in high school. You're on a high school yeah, field last year. Facing him now. Go block him. No, he didn't. No. <laughs> Matt Dart have punted again. And Shepard is back. And punting into a breeze. And it's a pretty short kick. Shepard, fair catch at the 37. Yeah, and the challenge all week, and, and now we're seeing it play out for Butch Jones, is he's got to come up with a plan, especially on third down. And he knows to be able to help out this offensive line. And ultimately, Justin Worley and these receivers to try to execute. This is Ford. Mm -hmm. Tennessee defense stringing an accurate. They've had a lot of excellent plays, but the one coverage bust is, is put them in a 10-zip hole. Yeah, yeah, and, and again, they're they're very, very determined to be able to match up with uh, this running game of Oklahoma's. And, uh, they're, they're willing to leave those corners on an island. They, and, you know, they had the one middle air where they gave up for the easy touchdown, but for the most part, they're holding up against the run. But you leave yourself a bit vulnerable against the pass because Knight can throw it. Doing very well on first down out of the Volunteers, and Knight does throw it. Catch made and breaking a tackle is Jerron Neal, junior out of St. Louis. So it'll set up third down. One of the reasons that Tennessee felt that they had to come in and, and load up the line of scrimmage is because of this. Not just the inexperience, but look at the size of Oklahoma's offensive line. And these guys are veterans. You heard Butch Jones this week and some of his coaches saying, yeah, they're redshirt juniors and redshirt seniors, and we're playing a lot of first-year guys. So they're, they're going to they're gonna have to do something, slant, angle the defensive line, and also commit those numbers. Big third down here. Mm, big edge and trenches on both sides for Oklahoma. Knight protection and third down. Zips it across to Shepard. Shepard running into the secondary. Sterling Shepard cuts back and is dropped at the 15 by Cam Sutton, but a huge play, and the Sooners are in position again. 45 yards. Another big third down throw by Trevor Knight. Throws in rhythm. And if you're going to bring pressure, you've got to bring your corners up tight against Sterling Shepard. If he has a free release against this secondary on third down, the ball's going to go to number three. He is clearly the guy in this offense, and he had a free release. And when he does, he and Trevor Knight are in rhythm. He was the slot receiver a year ago, but he's the main guy now. They lost three of their top four pass catchers. On first down, Ford. Hit for no gain. So again, Tennessee doing the job on first down. It was A.J. Johnson with the stop. Here's the pass. Yeah, you go back to this pass, and you can see that 
Trevor Knights worked very, very hard this summer to become an even more complete player. He had the big bowl game, but you see he gets back, no hitch, ball is thrown right on the money, and again, this is the guy that he's worked the hardest with in Sterling Shepard. Sterling last week, eight catches, 177 yards, and the receiver that Tennessee knew they had to try to take out to try to make Knight have to find somebody else to make plays. Shepard, a productive guy last year with 51 catches and seven touchdowns. Hand it off inside to Ford, and he muscles forward. It'll be another third down for Oklahoma. Final minute of the quarter. And the thing that becomes disheartening if you're a Tennessee fan is they're, they're playing well enough, and we've got a, an injured player here. Looks like the true freshman, Derek Barnett. But you play well, you play well, and then, boom, you give up a big play, especially early in the game. We talked about how they needed to start fast and, and get some confidence established. Let's see pain that Barnett is and he's backed up by another true freshman it shows you why Oklahoma is so tough to stop when you've got a guy who's so confident and playing so well at tempo as Knight is yeah I mean I think the experience that he had in the Sugar Bowl against Alabama I think skyrocketed his confidence, not just in his ability, but I think in the team's ability and this offense. And I think Josh Heupel, the offensive coordinator, they're calling plays. They're just running faster. They're executing much, much better now that they have a quarterback with some experience. And, and last year, he was fighting for his job with Blake Bell. Now it's his show. It's, it's his offense. Exactly. And teammates praising his leadership, his command out there. He's completed his last six passes. He needs five on this third down. It's Ford in motion and a whistle. I think Tennessee called a timeout from the sideline because they saw a different formation with the fullback, Dimitri Flowers, coming into the game. And that's who Oklahoma was going to try to throw a shovel pass to there. 12 seconds of the quarter. Vile's trying to force a field goal attempt. We determine our champion on the field. We play each other every year. Pitting it. Reeves Mabin was the linebacker who blitzed on the play where there was a busted coverage when Todd Kelly came off the edge. That time they try to sneak the wheel route again with a running back. This time Reeves Mabin is all over it. Honeycutt's trying to track down the career scoring record of Oklahoma had by DeMarco Murray. His career only is his 66 of 76. Chip shot from 27. Oklahoma twice held to field goals in this first quarter after long drives. Not quite as dominant as the starts in the first two games, but a 13-0 lead and a defense that has given the Volunteers offensive line lots of trouble. Red NFL Sunday should start at ESPN, 10 Eastern. Sunday NFL countdown presented by Snickers. Chris Berman in the game with all the latest news and updates right up until kickoff. And before you set your fantasy lineups, our experts provide the latest news and injury reports. Fantasy football now, delivered by Papa John's, ESPN2 at 11 a.m. Also on the Watch ESPN app. So the one promising drive, Kirk, that Tennessee mounted in the first quarter ended with that blitz and that fumble by the quarterback. Well, they, they are, as predicted, struggling to, to establish the line of scrimmage. They're at negative nine right now in rushing yards. And it's going to be a rough night running the football. So when you become one-dimensional, you become obviously more predictable, and it allows the defense to attack you in a very aggressive manner. And I think that's that's the challenge for him tonight is how do you stay multiple when all you're going to have a chance to do really is throw the football? You talk about why Oklahoma is so difficult to defend, why they create these one-on-one -on -one matchups that make it tough to help out on those talented edge pass rushers. Busy quarter for Nick Hodgson. It's a lower kick taken in the end zone by Devin Young. And he goes forward to the 20. Here comes a flag in the final play of the quarter. First flag by this SCC crew. Matt Moore is the referee. Player down on kickoff coverage is Derek Woods, the Richard sophomore wide receiver. It's being attended to. 
appears to be grasping his leg. Here's the call from Matt Moore. During the return, personal foul. Tripping. Number 13 of the receiving team. At the distance to the goal, we will have an untimed down. So Devon Swafford guilty of the penalty. It'll be an untimed down. We'll have to do it again. It's like Woods is being carried off, not putting any weight at all on that left leg. So Tennessee gets an offensive snap from their 10-yard line, and this will be the final play of the first quarter. They handed to Hurd, the freshman wrapped up immediately by Charles Tapper, the fine defensive end. So 13 nothing Oklahoma into the first quarter here in Norman Saturday Night Football on ABC presented by Wells Fargo. The volunteers begin the second quarter with a second and seven play. And off inside the herd. He ran 14 plays Kirk in the first quarter almost half of them six were for zero or negative yardage. Obviously their big thing is tempo and, and being able to sustain drives and being able to convert on third down tonight so far one of three here comes another third down Let's see where the pressure comes it's been coming from the field with striker he's walked out right now. Sooners rush only three Willie finds nobody open until fires late over the middle oh, and jump ball they were knocking into each other. Julian Wilson deflected it. Quentin Hayes was in the neighborhood, but it was crowded. And, and they only rushed three that time. You know, that's the thing. That's the versatility of OU's attack. They show Grissom, and then he drops at the end. They still get pressure. They still move Justin Worley, but you've got eight guys in coverage. Makes it really hard to try to squeeze one in here on third down. Really good job by Julian Wilson getting his right arm around north to knock that ball up into the air, and they almost got the pick. Another punt from Dar. Shepard could give the Sooners excellent field position here. Dar with the breeze at his back. And Shepard makes a fair catch near midfield. And Trevor Knight in Oklahoma go back to work. Up by 13. Territory here in rhythm with Sterling Shepard for a big game for the Sooners. And then the recognition. Saw the Tennessee busted a coverage. Finds the running back Keith Ford out of the backfield for the touchdown for Oklahoma. Once again, great field position for the Sooners who've averaged their own 43. Samaji Piran, the tough, physical, true freshman runner with a nice gain on first down. Reeves may have been stopped him. This is the other concern for Tennessee is this committee of backs with Keith Ford, Alex Ross, and now Piran. Piran comes in as the third guy. He's 245 pounds of pure muscle. You and I were on the field before the game, and Kale Gundy came over to us and said, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> you see my true freshman running back? My gosh. He's been in the weight room. Doesn't look like a true <laughs> freshman. No oh, doubt. He got eight yards on first down and now a false start on the left side. Yeah, P. Bryan's also a very emotional guy, Kirky. False start. Offense. Number 10. Five yards penalty. Second down. And there's Bell. And he was in tears after his first college game. It was just the end of the culmination of a lifelong dream to get out there. Thought he played pretty well and just showed his emotions yeah, to his teammates yeah, after the game. I think players really appreciate that. And uh, I, what I appreciate is that all three of these young backs, you've got a couple of sophomores and then Piran, who's the true freshman, and they're all happy when the other guy's in there doing well. And Kale Gunny told us there really isn't any rhyme or reason for how he shuffles these backs in. He, but he loves to keep them all involved. Let them stay fresh. The handoff, the young guy again, it'll set up a third down. It also helps to have Trevor Knight as a leader. 
a, really a good distributor, makes a lot of good decisions. Uh, we've seen that on display already. I think the confidence that he gained in that Sugar Bowl performance where he was the MVP and ended up putting up those huge numbers just skyrocketed his confidence and understanding of what he's capable of doing within this offense. I haven't seen him run the ball yet tonight, and that's no. a big part of the skill set. He gained 445 yards as a runner last year. Mike, across the middle, it's broken up. So Tennessee able to get off the field quickly. Cam Sutton made a nice play and then will force an Oklahoma punt. And they motion the back out to open up the middle. I thought you might see quarterback draw, but instead it's it's Neal, Deron Neal coming through the middle of that defense, but great coverage by Cam Sutton. He's got good size at about 6'1", 190 pounds. We talked about him being an impact player because he's going to be out on an island. About third down coming up with a swat there to keep that ball away from Neal. He now drops back as a punt returner. Jed Barnett, the senior, second year punting for the Sooners, kick it away. Gets it up into the breeze, and it's a pretty short kick. Sutton takes it at the 20-yard line. So Tennessee's defense doing its best to keep the Volunteers close. Still down 13. late oh you won it and butch jones was not yet born on new year's day 68 that's the last meeting it's been almost a half century since these two teams have gotten together how about the big man well, can the tennessee offense do something with that defense some well-earned rest you take the handoff on the first down morley has some time takes his first shot downfield over through north I just like to call on first and ten. I mean, now you're facing second and ten, obviously. But I like the idea of taking a shot. And why not take it downfield with Marquez North? 6-4 has a chance to get behind Julian Wilson. They're pushing and shoving a little bit. But I don't mind it because it stretches the defense, lets them know that you're not afraid to take a shot. And also, good protection there on first and ten. They get near the red zone. North is a terrific weapon. 6-4, long arms, huge hands, goes up and gets the ball. But Worley's pressured again and dropped for a third time tonight. Eric Stryker in the neighborhood. Chris, how Stryker, this is what you asked me, what makes it so tough? It's because of the way they bring guys late. Look, Stryker was walked out here, and then he comes down here right before the ball is snapped. And there's that true freshman out on an island there, Coleman Thomas, trying to block one of the best pass rushers, the quickest pass rushers in the country. Alabama couldn't do it in the Sugar Bowl. We got a true freshman out there trying to block it. Romar with the sack, and here comes the pressure again, and down goes Worley. Charles Tapper dropped, and there is a flag down on the far side. And that OU defensive line is starting to feel itself now. And check the penalty. That's the safety, Quentin Hayes, and that will not make either Soup's brother happy as it wipes out the sack. And Mike's frustrated, obviously. Uh, yeah, they, they, you could see Hayes, they've been bringing that blitz a lot. It's been very effective tonight. Walking 10 up to the line of scrimmage. They disguise it. That's part of the genius behind this offense is the way they can come at you in so many different ways. Now they're showing pressure, and they'll, a lot of them will drop at the snap of the ball. Now they're all coming. Yeah, safety came over the center. They flip it off, though. A nice little play to Jalen Hurd, and the freshman off and running. Gets a block downfield and gets to midfield. And finally, the Volunteers handle the blitz. Great call, an easy throw, and only thing Worley had to do was recognize the pressure. Mike Stoops brought everybody, and all you're going to have a chance to do is if you don't get to the quarterback, there's nobody left, not only to take the running back, but he's got a convoy in front of him. Oh, you was lucky that didn't go all the way to the house. Did gain 30 yards, third catch of the young season for the true freshman. And first down, they hand it to him, and Hurd is dropped behind the line. And there very quickly was Alexander and Jordan Phillips. Now this Oklahoma defense is pinning its ears back and trying to kind of get this field to tilt one way, and that's against Tennessee. They can see the pressure that Justin Worley has been on tonight, but he's still hanging tough. He's hanging in that pocket, and he's taking his lumps. And with the penalty against Quentin Hayes, wiped out the sack, gave the Volunteers due life. 
Uh, big play gets in the midfield, but it's second and 12, and you can expect more pressure again from the Sooners. Worley lofts it downfield and trying to make a tough catch was Jason Kroom. Julian Wilson tightly covered him. 6'5", 240 pounds, Jason Kroom going up against Julian Wilson. Wilson's a big corner. But they're, they're kind of going back and forth. He fighting off Wilson with his right hand, and he tries to make the one-handed catch. Official standing right there. Could have gone either way. Good no call. Wilson was the nickel back a year ago, still adjusted to the corner position, but he is a big, fast dude. Bob Scoop's gone timeout. You know, the play clock was down at five for the Volunteers. And Sooners will spend a defensive timeout. So Butch Jones, young team, only eight guys here in their third year in the program, trying to weather things, trying to answer Oklahoma and cut into this lead. And you talked about what makes this defense difficult to deal with, and it's not just the youth of Tennessee. When you go to a 3-4 scheme, and you see it in the NFL a lot, you have three defensive linemen, then you have two outside linebackers. What Mike Stoops has is three big athletic defensive linemen to give you a push in the middle. And the, the bonus is his two outside linebackers in Grissom, 85, on one side, and Stryker, 19, on the other, is they're versatile. They can drop in coverage, and they can blitz the quarterback. And when they both walk up to the line of scrimmage and you're an offensive line, you're trying to figure out who's coming and who's dropping. And sometimes they both come. So it's really built on deception, confusion, and then overall speed. They're able to create one-on-one -on -one matchups that are favorable, aren't they, Kirk? Oh, yeah. You saw the excitable Mike Stoops, eight years away from this place at Arizona, says it feels like a blur. He's very happy to be back. On the third long, they get it over to North, who shakes a couple tackles and hammers for a first down. A much-needed play for that volunteer offense. Well, as much as Sterling Shepard is the go-to guy for the Sooners, Marquez North is the same for Tennessee. Soft coverage against Zach Sanchez. He feels that he can give him that cushion because the distance that they had to go for the first down, but a good quick throw that time by Worley, and North shows what he can do with the ball in his hands after the catch. Sanchez, the playmaker in that secondary with a missed tackle, eh? It'll make him mad. You know, the catch is made by Josh Smith, but it's a loss. We just talked about how Grissom is versatile, 85. You know, you think of him at 265 pounds, he's going to rush the quarterback. Look at him outside. He's out in space at 265 pounds. He came in at 225, kind of a high school basketball player, but he's grown into a 265-pound man, but he can drop and he can also pressure. He's the guy that had the scoop and score against Alabama in the Sugar Bowl. Had a couple of fumble recoveries in that win over Alabama. Worley gets protection, steps up, could have run, but fires downfield, has a man wide open, and it's Josh Smith. Touchdown, Tennessee. Wow, a long march, Kirk. A drive prolonged by the penalty on Hayes, and they find the end zone. And look who he's matched up against. This is a very deceiving receiver as far as his quickness and speed. And he's a veteran. Josh Smith understands coverage. He's matched up against his safety. And Ahmad Thomas, who's a sophomore, and I give credit to Justin Worley for buying a little bit of time again, once again stepping into the pocket, buys a little bit of time, and instead of running, because it looked like he could have yeah. gotten some yards, he takes a chance and finds the matchup that he wanted. A 40-yard touchdown as true freshman Aaron Medley knocks through the point. And Tennessee's defense has done enough to hang around, keep it close, and finally the off 80 yards away. But Worley converted a third and 11 and a third and 12 on the drive. That was huge, and, and especially considering what you're dealing with up front with the youth. And we're going to focus on the quarterback and the receivers, but I'm going to talk all night if Tennessee's able to hang around about that offensive line and what they're facing. That was a, also give them an assist for that drive. George Bullock boots it away. And an excellent coverage by Tennessee, which suddenly has uh, got a little pep in their step. They drop Neal back down inside the 15. We talked, you know, if the game feels like it's out of reach, but right now they're down 13 to 7. Raflock trivia question. Since 1990, volunteers have had 10 running backs selected in the first three rounds of the draft. The last Tennessee running back to lead the SEC in rushing. So they've sent lots of guys to the league. 
Who's the last? By the way, you think Jamal, Jamal Lewis? Lewis. Yeah. I, mean, I, I, I don't think the Bear would ask that if it were that easy. I think you're going to have to dig a little bit there. And Chris come up with the, the Bear. He, he cooks up these questions for us. So Oklahoma suddenly a little more urgency. Remember, this team has not been challenged in any second quarter so far this season. Knight has time, and he'll just chuck it away. Chris, for a young team on the road where nobody gave them much of a chance except their fan base and the people in that locker room, as I said, this game feels a lot more than 13-7. I mean, Oklahoma's had their way. They haven't been able to punch it in. Tennessee deserves a lot of credit for it. But after scoring the pull within six, this defense comes out of the field. You talked about a little bit of pep in their step. It's a big series in this football game for both these teams. And second down, give it ahead to Alex Ross. And once again, excellent penetration. They drop him for a loss. Corey Vereen got in there. And now it's third and long. And we talked about when you're undersized as a defense, you got to slant an angle. And this Tennessee defense, they're moving bodies and they're attacking downhill at the line of scrimmage. Watch the defensive line. See how they're moving? And it's a bit of a risk because if you slant or angle the wrong way, it's a, you, you create a crease. That time they guessed right. Sooners only two of five and third down. Most of them have been third and long. Knight escapes. Buys time, fires sideline. It's complete, but short of a first down to Duran Neal. Did not get the yardage. Justin Coleman was right there. And this time we see Tennessee just rushing three. They used A.J. Johnson, the all-conference middle linebacker, as a spy in case of a scramble by Trevor Knight. And that's what forced him to have to throw the football instead of trying to run. Remember, he's very effective on third down and running. They rush three, get, they get pressure, and then you can see right there, A.J. Johnson chasing him down. Kurt Mountain again also in there as a pass rusher lined up as a defensive end on third down. So a second straight, three and out for the Oklahoma offense. Barnett to punt it. It's a pretty good one. And a fair catch made at the 32-yard line. So Tennessee's offense after the 45-yard punt, back to work, down only six. Wilson, though, on the scramble, he'll take it in from 15 yards out. 17-14, ND over Purdue right now at the half. Chris? Thank you, Chris. Volunteers play quickly, and that's Jalen Hurd. Tennessee defense comes up with a big stop to get the ball back. Remember the last time the balls had the ball, they went into the end zone. Justin, Wor Justin Worley converting two big third downs before the touchdown pass. Yeah, he's been pressured all night. Kirk sacked three times, but he's 10 of 15 with that touchdown to Smith. Zone read play, and the Sooners stuff it right away. So here comes a third down. Eventually, Worley does have enough athletic ability where he can pull that out, and they'll probably save that for a certain third down when the defense is not expecting it, try to lull him to sleep. But that defense is collapsing quickly down in the back when they give him that action. And successful on third down against Utah State and Arkansas State. Tough for sure here with the crowd noise and the... Oklahoma talent. You need four. Where they looked immediately left, gets it out quickly. North spins back, has a first down out near midfield. Wilson stopped him. It's amazing to me the soft coverage. Wilson's bailing on third and short, and you're dealing with an offense that doesn't have time. They don't. They're not going to protect the quarterback because it's a struggle for him. So, if anything, you would think the corners would be up tight, trying to make these wide receivers have to work to get open to try to disrupt the timing. But an easy release and an easy throw there on third down. Josh Malone, the tall freshman, not north on the first down catch. 
Take it to Hurd. Worley looked back that way. Pressured. Hit as he throws, and it's incomplete. Boy, there were about four Sooners converging on the quarterback there. Well, they, they found an area that they're attacking. And, and with all due respect to Coleman Thomas, this kid's a freshman out of Virginia. He, he's probably eventually going to be a great player. But Stryker's done this the entire first half. He's out, walked out over the slot, and as he gets close to the ball being snapped, he starts to cheat, cheat, cheat. And then as the ball is snapped, he's coming with momentum. And you got a true freshman trying to hold him out. They're going to have to use a tight end or a running back to chip striker. Otherwise, he's going to be in the backfield all night. And hand it to Lane. He's met immediately. Charles Tapper combining with Dominique. Alexander, Tapper, the all-conference guy a year ago, comes from Baltimore, excellent hoops player. Just look at the action again. Look at Stryker collapsing down. Everybody's collapsing into the inside, not respecting the threat of Justin Worley pulling that ball out. And really make another third down play. They need eight. And a tight end there to help. Once again, pressure. Cannot get away from Jordan Phillips. Big old nose tackle got in there. A 334 pound pass rusher. It, this time, they used the back. See to the right? That, that time he helps the freshman. But when you move the right tackle out, there's other bodies that are capable of getting in there. The big fella showing some moves here, Jordan Phillips. So you worry so much about striker Chris to the outside that you can't double team down on guys like Tapper and Phillips, and then you leave them one on one, and then they get into the quarterback. Phillips, the guy who had a back injury last year, hampered him. It's tough when you get all those speedy guys. If you get a 330 pounder, didn't get in there for the quarterback. Prototypical nose guard. So Shepard back deep. Another punt from Matt Dar. Shepard this time again calls fair catch. His mom, Sherry, doesn't like the fact she that he be. returns punts and kickoffs. It makes her very nervous. And maybe he's, that's in his she head. She might be giving him a sign from the, up in the stands. <laughs> Another fair catch. Mom, let him run with one. Affleck. Affleck trivia question. The last Tennessee back to lead the SEC in rushing. We thought that Jamal Lewis was, was too obvious. That is Travis Stevens? Tra Jamal Lewis, I'm going to say. Travis, Travis Stevens. I threw that one in there. Call. Good call. Oh, my God. 2001, so it's been 13 years, even though they had so many guys drafted from that position. Remember that last game he had against Florida in the Swamp in 01? Yeah. They fake it. They take a shot downfield. Looping it for Shepard. It makes a catch out near midfield. Excellent throw from Trevor Knight. He beat Cam Sutton. Off of the play action look, the corners, remember, they got to hold up on an island. Here's two of the best, Cam Sutton for Tennessee and Sterling Shepard. He's been given a fair catch on the punts. This time he gets one-on-one -on -one and he gets around Sutton in a hurry. And you can see the acceleration once he gets by him. 32 yards. Yeah, mom's got no problem as a receiver. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't want him returning those punts and kicks. Sooners. Give it to Ford. And it was a short game. Again, Oklahoma not getting anywhere near the production on the first down they expected. And I love the Tennessee mentality of realizing we're gonna we're gonna live on the edge this game. We have to live on the edge with our slants, our angling, our blitzing of the linebackers, our corners out on an island. And so far, you know, we're 430 to go in this in the first half. They're holding up. They're giving up some plays, but they're holding up. Shepard with 90 yards in his three receptions. Second and nine, they motion Ford, and it's a screen. They throw back underneath, and this is Piran, the big freshman physical back. They try to rip the ball away, but he takes it to the 35. Again, he's just a freshman, folks. They motion out a back, which gets A.J. Johnson. Watch him run with Key Ford. Now, all of a sudden, they think, oh, it's going to go out to the left, and it sets up perfectly to go out to the right. Anytime you can get A.J. Johnson out of the middle of that defense, and now you go back to the right, it's a weakness for Tennessee's defense and a great area to attack by Josh Heupel. Play action on first down. Knight and just throw it away into traffic on the sideline. Corey Vereen has been active tonight. He was once again pressuring the quarterback. 
Well, the man that he wanted to go to actually fell down. Sterling Shepard lost his footing, and he didn't have anybody left to get the ball to. And there, there again, again, one-on-one. -on -one. Tries to get around Sutton and just loses his footing. Everybody else is covered. There's nothing that Trevor Knight could do with the football. Volunteers knew they needed to have Vereen win some one-on-one -on -one battles tonight if they were going to get after Knight. And he's done a pretty good job. Keith Ford flares out of the backfield. They throw it back to Shepard. Shepard weaving through traffic, jumps over a tackler. 26-yard line just short of the first out of the flag is down on the near side. They picked up the flag, so no foul. And a game that sets up third and one for Oklahoma. Big P. Ryan, that 243-pound freshman, is behind Knight. And Shepard in motion. They give it to P. Ryan, who makes a cut, hammers straight ahead. Yeah, it's tough for the first guy to stop him. He's got a first down. He and sure does. They got the ball, but no fumble. He sure doesn't look like a true freshman. Take a good look at this guy. Shaking his thumb out as he comes off the field. As Tennessee players thought when they hit him before his knee touched that they were able to fight the ball away from him. When you're a young, when you're a young back, that's one thing linebackers, especially SEC linebackers, are going to do. They're going to try to test that ball security. Towards the end of the play, he gets the first down, but when they stand you up, especially, they're going to start to ooh, fight for that football. Is his knee down? He's kind of squeezing it with his arm there. It was a false start. False start. 77 offense. Five yard penalty. First down. Monte Savage, the backup guard, flagged. It's Oklahoma after giving up the touchdown, trying to answer here before halftime. 2.37 to play. Mitchell Savage in the game. You throw he and Tyler Evans, another backup guard. He's in the game as well. I think that's the big thing for Oklahoma. Can they stay healthy on the offensive line, an area that's been depleted over the years? Mitch Jones wants an explanation from Matt Moore, this SEC crew. They may want to look at that play again. Did P. Ryan fumble the ball? Could they tell whether or not his knee was down? You can see the Volunteers ripping at the ball. Begins to come loose there. He's got a wedge in his arm against his body. But it's not secure with the arm. And you can see Sutton diving in there. It's a Big 12 replay crew. David Ames in charge of it. It would be enough to overturn the call of no fumble. And the ball beginning to come loose. He's got I, it pinned against his like body. The ball starts to come out. You know, if they called for progress, then they, they wouldn't be able to review it. Let's check in Bill Lamagne, longtime Big Ten official, to see what the replay officials are specifically looking at here. Uh, they're going to look uh, to see if the knee is down, control of the football. It appears the ball is loose. Now what they're going to determine is before 23 comes in, did he pull the ball away? So I'm not sure we have indisputable video evidence. Well, but show us when the, when is it a fumble? When, when has he lost possession of the ball? He's lost the ball right now. Oh, he man. does not have control of the football. So uh, if you're looking at this, that ball's out in your mind, right? I don't know right there when 23 comes over his back whether, he's re whether the runner regained it. It appears not. So the ball wasn't held in his hands. He had a kind of his arm holding it against his side as the knees were close to hitting the ground, and Sutton's in there ripping at it. You can see that the official came running in from the near sideline, spotting the ball as a first down and no fumble. Exactly. And, and Bill, again, if you could just say when in your mind you think it, the ball's loose. I think the ball's loose right now. The other interesting thing to this is, is the that... The knee's down, yeah. I don't know if that knee. Yeah, he's still driving. Knee. He's actually driving the legs yeah. trying to get the first down. Yeah. I think we got a good chance for a fumble here. The other interesting thing is the false start gave the opportunity for this play still to be exactly. challenged. Exactly. If the play would have got off, then there would, it would have been too late. After further review, the ruling is that 
that the knee was down, that the play stand, the offside penalty remains. Tennessee is charged with a timeout. Well, Butch Jones not going to like the verdict from the Big 12 replay crew. The SEC officials on the field not calling it a fumble either. What a what a massive swing because either the Volunteers are going to get the ball back down six. Instead, that was a really was got it at the 29 yard line. Really tough to to look at that angle and say definitively that that knee touched. Bob Stoops is very good at running plays quickly. Period. But also when he thinks there might be a question. David Ames, that replay official, said they'll get up very fast. Stoops has an excellent sense of when you turn, want to try to hurry the play and prevent the replay. The false start, as Bill pointed yeah, out, allowed yeah. them to take another look. Yeah, if Savage didn't move, that play would have been would have been uh, able to be executed. But Oklahoma keeps it. First and 15. Volunteers walk up some pressure. They fake it. Quarterback keeps the first run of the night for Trevor Knight, and he shows the quickness down inside the 20. He knew it was coming. We saw it early a couple times where he's given that play. It's his own read. They're collapsing down, and Trevor Knight has some quicks. Now, he'll, he'll get out to the edge, pick up some big yards, and after the mistake with the, the uh, procedure call, he gets around the corner and gives him a good chance here on second down. He averages 9.1 a carry on those zone read keepers. Yep. You got about that amount there. So on second and six. Play clock at five. Four. And was straight ahead. Spins into the secondary. Has a first down as he bounces to the ten. Well, I, this is about keeping these backs healthy and fresh with three of them. He, well, he bounced right off of Brian Randolph there. And I don't know, Chris, all three of these backs, are, they've got a bright future, but Keith Ford looks like an Oklahoma back. I mean, he's, he's got suddenness to him. He's got power. He bounces off of uh, safeties and linebackers, keeps his feet moving. Average almost six a carry as a freshman. Kind of a combination of, a, of the physical back P. Ryan and the speedster Ross. P. Ryan looking on. Ford still in there on first down. He's got it again, and he's got a crease. Touchdown, Oklahoma. So the Sooners win the verdict from the replay crew. Turn it to a touchdown and stretch the lead as halftime approaches. Eighty-one yards in nine plays, and four of his second touchdown tonight. One catching and one running. A low line drive from Honeycutt. Well, the offensive line does a really good job of getting up to the linebackers. Another zone read, and when the quarterback runs the ball to the edge it gets the defense's attention and makes the blocking angles a little bit easier you see williams climbing to that second level nice job by the offensive line of fitting just perfectly there and the vision the cutback that hole's designed to go to the right but he saw the grass was to the back side and he does a good job with his vision and awareness to cut that back that was a big drive for this ou offense before at the end of this first half they had a couple of three and outs before that drive he got started with the nice sideline throw to Shepard. Tennessee fans saying, wait a second, we're, we're, we're still not sure that wasn't the fumble, but not enough to overturn it. And Oklahoma back up 13. Let's go to Chris Goddard for an update. All right, Chris, time for the AT&T inside the headset. USC at BC over on ESPN. Somebody called down on the headset, dialed up a reverse. Sherman Alston taking it the distance, 54 yards out. The Eagles have outscored, outrushed SC, I should say, 197 to 8 in the first half, and they lead at halftime, Kurt. Well, well, that's a BC team, Chris, that couldn't do much on the ground coming into this game. Trojans got out quickly, but might have, let their, guard, might, have, might have let their guard down a little bit. There have been upsets all over the place uh, on this Saturday. That would be a big one. Low kick driven into the wind by Hodson and no return. 
So a minute 33 for the volunteer offense to work with. Oklahoma is going to get the ball to start the second half. Remember, Monday night, Chip Kelly, our buddy Philadelphia Eagles against Andrew Luck and the Colts. A rematch of sorts of those Pac-12 games between Stanford yeah. and Oregon. 815, also available on the Watch ESPN app. Eagles, very sluggish start at the opener before roaring back against Jacksonville. It'll be a fun one to watch. What do you do? Do you take a shot well, here? You got, you, you got one timeout left. You might try on the on the first down play. You get, maybe give yourself a, a chance, but you don't want to make a huge mistake here the way your team has battled here in the first half. You don't want to have a sack or an interception. Really? Again, flips it off short into heavy traffic. The screen didn't work. Heather. Guys, it appears that the Tennessee O-line is having trouble with the snap count three times during the last possession. And just now, left guard Marcus Jackson had to slap center Mike Crowder to get him to snap the ball. Crowder came off the field telling his line coach, I can't hear. And guys, it is really loud down here. You could practice against crowd noise. Not quite the same as the real thing. And again, these Tennessee volunteers are so young. And once again, Oklahoma. Tries to get him. They flip it out just in the nick of time. Marlon Lane cut the little desperation pass from Worley. Well, the pressure's been coming from the right much of the half, but now the, the pressure comes from the backside. The defensive end that we or the outside linebacker, Grissom, so much a focus on striker. Now we're starting to see Jordan Phillips, the previous drive, and Gino Grissom. Two handed pass there, Kirk. <laughs> get rid of it. Whatever it takes, throw it left handed. He's out of a minute before halftime. They need seven on this third down. Today. I really think you just try to get in and, and be content down 20 to 7, especially on the road with this offensive line. And letting the play clock wind down, not a great deal of urgency at the moment. And they just hand it off to Hurd, who will not get the first down. So we'll see if Oklahoma spends a timeout to force a punt. Oh, yeah. Bob Stoops halfway out on the field calling a timeout. He was tackled by Tom which means now it's a different deal. Now you're talking about a quarterback with some experience and an offensive line, and I think Oklahoma, they're going to try to attack and try to get in field goal range. Take a look at the AP Top Ten brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Oregon went over Wyoming. Alabama hammering, but not covering against Southern Miss. Only won by 40. <laughs> And Georgia, of course, the loss to South Carolina as the Gamecocks basically win to stay alive in the SEC East. USC, as we showed you in Chris's update, trailing at halftime. So Sterling Shepard, we'll see if he decides not to fair catch and create some good field position, give his offense something to work with for 37 seconds before halftime. Sooners peel back to set up the return. And Shepard this time will take it. Circles back and is dropped. Excellent coverage by the Volunteers. And the Sooners are at their own 30 with 28 seconds to go. NASCAR's all-new chase begins tomorrow in Chicago. 16 drivers trying to move on to the second round. Chase for the Sprint Cup title. 1 o'clock Eastern over on ESPN. Also available on the Watch ESPN app. At 28 seconds and one timeout with, of course, the boundary and first downs of your friend here for Trevor Knight. Bob Stoops did not call a timeout to kill the clock. He's going to try to, I think, try to find some matchups and see if he can pick up some chunks of yards and try to get into the field goal range. He's got about 35 yards he needs to gain to really give his kicker a chance. Winnicott's career long is from 53, but he's working against a breeze this direction. Knight has time over the middle. It's a dart complete out across the 46 to Blake Bell. Nice diving catch by the six foot six tight end. What great hands the former quarterback has, and they can they can flex him out the way they just did, almost as a receiver. He's off to the left again. Get the first down. Now restart the clock. Knight pressured, escapes, fires over the middle again. Bell's got it again. Suddenly down inside the 35 with 12 seconds to play. They said they needed 35 yards. That's 36 yards in two plays. Still have their timeout left. 
See how com a command this Trevor Knight is? Remember, this is an offense that's up tempo to begin with. Lock running inside of 10. Flyers again over the middle. Off the hands of a receiver and intercepted. So Tennessee gets a turnover. Ladero McNeil on the carom. Justin Coleman deflected it with three seconds to go. How about the play by Justin Coleman? The fans here in Norman thought that he got there a little bit prematurely and pass interfered with the receiver. Oklahoma taking one more shot to try to get a little bit deeper. It's pretty close. I mean, I, I think the timing was pretty well. And how about the awareness to come up with this turnover for Tennessee? Great coverage by Coleman. Great reaction by yeah, McNeil. That McNeil came at him quick. in a hurry. <laughs> it did. So Oklahoma denied the long field goal attempt. Tennessee's defense comes up with its first takeaway of the half. Oklahoma stretches the lead back out to 13 with the late touchdown run from Keith Ford after that controversial non-fumble. But Tennessee hanging around. This young volunteer team on the road, hostile environment. We'll have to get the Sooners off the field to begin the third quarter. Huh? Yeah, Butch Jones always talks about brick by brick. It's a process to build this program back up, and that was a first half. You know, they're down 13, but could have been a lot worse. They should be happy with where they are, and we'll see what happens in this second half. Stoops' offense come up with almost 300 yards and four sacks. Heather's got Butch Jones. Chris, thanks so much, Coach. Obviously very frustrated with the officiating staff. What is your frustration? Well, not really frustrated. Our kids are just playing exceptionally hard, and, and you know, we kind of were able to flip field position. We're behind field position all the first half, made a play, and we just need to keep hanging around versus a talented football team. And what were you just asking them about? What explanation did you get? Oh, that's between us. Okay. Coach, thank you. <laughs> okay. All right, Butch, I, th I think this, we can, with we can smile, guess. With a smile. <laughs> Coach Jones keeping secrets He's with the scheme and also the athletic ability of this OU defense. Bullock drives the kick to the goal line, and here's Alex Ross. And running back, hammered down at the 25-yard line. Our Pacific Life game summary looks at the quarterback comparison here. And you, you have to give credit to Worley. Despite the pressure, he had the sack and the fumble. 12 of 19. Yeah. I mean, Knight to pick at the end of the half. Yeah, great, a great half for, for Trevor Knight, 14 to 21. But but I think the, the story that you can't really tell by just looking at the numbers is just Worley, almost every single time he's dropping back to throw, he's getting hit, and he's having to step away from pressure. Big story, Kirk, I think, is the, the neck beard trending quarterback. Did Andrew Luck start that? Is he he might, every he quarterback in college has, rocks the neck beard. Some pull it up. Better than others. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We saw Hogan last week for Stanford. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it is a new trend, and it, it, it's Andrew Luck's fault. Yeah. Slip it near side to Shepard, looking for box and gets a couple out across the 35-yard line near the marker. Heather? I do not have a neck beard report for you. What I can tell you is about Bob Stoops. The emphasis in the locker room was on offense, specifically on running the ball. 64 rushing yards, not enough, according to Bob Stoops. They also want to use that tempo, disrupt a little bit, and get going without the defense being set. Now there's a quick throw and another first down at the 45-yard line. Ford had 45 yards rushing. Nobody else has done much. Yeah, what Bob Stoops says to Heather, I, I think, has a lot of... Uh, a lot to do with who they pride themselves on being, not just tonight, but just as an offense. I mean, they can throw it or they can run it, depending on how you want to defend them. But they've been facing a lot of eight men in the box, and it's kind of forced their hand to have to throw the ball a little bit more than maybe they wanted to. So a couple quick first downs. They hand it to Ford, picks his way for a short game. You saw the graphic, 44 straight times, and OU's had the lead at halftime. They've won. Goes all the way back to the 2009 Red River rivalry. This tempo is uh, is very, very challenging, not just to defend, but when it comes to the fatigue factor. They're on the, they're right now on pace to have over 80 snaps, potentially, in this football game. And again, without a whole lot of depth on the defensive line, we're going to keep a close eye on, on the Vols front with those linebackers included. Knight looks near side, flips underneath to Neal, and Durant Neal knifes to the secondary. 
down to the 10 yard line before Cameron Sutton could corral him and Oklahoma threatening again. A poor angle by Ladero McNeil coming up to make a play, but that's, that's another blown coverage by Tennessee. When they've given up some big plays, it's been because there's been some confusion, and that time there was confusion without a doubt with James, with Cam Sutton and the safety coming over to help him to the two receiver side. It's 43 more yards, yards after the catch tonight. The Oklahoma receivers, Kirk, 173. A lot of those catches have been in space, as you said, because of coverage busts. It's first and goal at the nine. And this is Ford. Lowers the head, gets about three, stays alive down to the five-yard line now. That, that was such an emphasis this week for the Tennessee defense it was yards after the catch. And, and uh, they just had to do a better job of not giving up plays, explosive plays, if they wanted to come in here. Listen, this was not a game that Tennessee looked at and said, oh, shucks, let's go in there and be competitive and get out of here with a moral victory. They thought about, let's go in here and win this game. And so they still feel that way, but they've got to definitely do the little things, and they can't give up these busted plays. One second to go. Knight keeps it. Gets the corner and dies for the end zone. And Oklahoma stretches the lead. The zone read is not just effective for Keith Ford, who scored on a touchdown at the other end, other end zone before the half was up. But you can see Trevor Knight, what he can do with the football when he keeps it. And a great block by Blake Bell, the former quarterback, sustaining his block and allowing, Bell, or allowing Knight to have room to get into the end zone. So a touchdown drive late in the first half and quickly in the second, and suddenly it's a 20-point game. They've been giving the ball quite a bit to the backs, and these outside linebacker defensive ends are collapsing down. Everybody comes down on Ford. Look at the block at the top by Blake Bell. That's a former quarterback doing a good job. But I'll tell you, Trevor Knight, he can hurt you throwing the football, but also with the quickness and acceleration when he has the ball in his hands. Here's the brand-new National Championship Trophy presented by Dr. Pepper. Awarded January 12th in Arlington. Sooner fans certainly hoping their team could be in contention, trying to make a, a strong statement in their final non-conference game tonight before they begin that nine-game Big 12 schedule. Everett Young is going to bring it out. Gets a couple blocks, dances across the 25, and then slammed it down hard right there. Four different guys have had sacks for Oklahoma tonight. Well, we, we focused a lot on Eric Stryker in the first half, and he was effective getting around the true freshman, Coleman Thomas, leading the inside interior push to be able to come up with plays. Well, then they moved it back to try to help out Marlon Lane. Well, what happens when you move up Marlon Lane out there is the big fellas make plays as well, getting a push to the middle. So this offensive line, we knew coming in they'd be challenged. They sure have, and I expect Mike Stoops to continue to turn up the pressure here to start this second half. Volunteers were once within six and two. Oklahoma touchdown sandwich around halftime put him in a hole here. First down throw to the 20. It's caught. And now they're going to rule incomplete. Heard was trying to come up with it. The ball is thrown in front of Heard. So it was a forward pass, and the yeah. freshman couldn't quite get the handle. Boy, it's tough. It, that's almost like a running play, but when your longest run again is just four yards, very tough on a young offensive line and a quarterback. Yeah, it, it makes you so predictable as an offense. I think they've done a, a pretty good job of still mixing things up, all things considered. Under one yard per first down play on average. Once again, there was pressure off the edge of a striker again. right in the face of Worley. Yeah, same blitz. Same blitz, this time coming from the field to the left of the quarterback. Again, he delays, delays, and then as the ball is snapped, there's no way the tight end can come over there and pick up that blitz. The truth, another true freshman, Daniel Helm, happened to be coming over. By the time he got over there, 19 strikers already by him, and it's a quarterback's face. If A.J. McCarron is watching this at all. Number 19. <laughs> Three sacks. Oh. All right, they need 10 on third down. What is Mike Stoops dialed up? No, they drop off, just rush four, and there's a completion. Nice catch across the middle by Alton Pig Howard, and they move the chains. Not only a nice catch, 
But after all the pressure he's been under, a good job of sitting in that pocket and putting the ball right on the money to Howard. He found some space. They didn't bring pressure. They brought four, played zone. Howard sits in that soft spot of the zone. And Justin Worley, boy, he is growing up. And if there's any question who the leader of this offense is, it's number 14. He gets 16 on third and one. Third catch for Howard. And this is Hurd. I think Howard is a guy that was a Wildcat quarterback, a jet sweep runner a year ago, a guy that was suspended for the spring and summer. They wanted him to rededicate himself. Chris Jones almost says this is a lifestyle. He just be a part-time player. Right, right. I think he's made that commitment. I think we've seen the difference in him this year in these first three games. Heard just battling for a short yard game. Just not much room up in the center of that Oklahoma defense. Jordan Evans got him. There's just nothing in the interior. You're not going to be able to get a push, and it's nothing against this young line. It's going to be hard for any offensive line this year against this 3-4 scheme. Jordan Phillips, Charles Tapper, and Dule in the middle, and then, the, of course, off the edge, Grissom and Stryker just setting the edge so well in this defense. Another third down. They need five. They move the pocket. Worley had some time initially and then just threw it into the front row. When you roll like this and you move that launch point your options are limited watch this he's going to look back to the inside but look at the coverage right there they take it away so when you roll to your left you've got two options there's nobody there because of the coverage there's nowhere for him to throw the football so he's got to throw it away Matthew Romar the big 287 pounder got in Worley's face late and Tennessee's got to give the ball back to this Oklahoma offense now down 20. And Dar pins Shepard on the sideline. He makes a fair catch there at the 16. Rare visit from the SEC to Norman. Bob Soups in his career, four and four against SEC teams. That's not counting kind of the games against AM and and Missouri when they were back in the Big 12. He's actually three and zero against Alabama in one and four against all the others, including, of course, two losses in the BCS championship game. Sooners up 20. Get the ball back at their 16. See if they try to slow it down a bit, Kirk. Grind some clock, or is it too early for that in the third quarter? I think it's too early. And they put the Ford out of the backfield. Once again, the young back used as a receiver. Reeves may have been stopped him, but after a gain of 11. Yeah, I think you'll see this offense continue to put their foot on the accelerator. Nice job here. I love that first and 10 call. The versatility of this quarterback. You can do so many different things. Again, multiple formations. You can't sub on defense if the Sooners aren't changing offensive personnel. But because they have versatile guys, they can continue to do this for a long drive. Play action. They take a shot downfield over the head of Shepard, who was well covered there. He thought too well covered by Coleman. And you bring up a good point about this offense and, and how versatile it is because it's not just tempo, but they have hybrid players mm -hmm. that can play multiple positions. So it's not just dealing with that personnel grouping that happens to be in, but they can do so many different things. Now, Sterling Shepard wears number three like his father Derek did. He was a great player here in the late 80s, part of the 85 National Championship team. And then Derek was hired as a graduate assistant coach by Bob Stoops. He left to go to Wyoming to be an assistant. And Derek Shepard passed away, died of a heart attack when he was just 35 years old. Now, Bob Stoops always had a feeling for Derek. He spoke at his funeral. He kept the remarks of the eulogy in a piece of paper in his desk for many years. And after Sterling signed with Oklahoma, Bob presented him with that piece of paper. But Sterling Shepard had always grown up around the program. had been a part of the locker room with his dad. And he actually kept Bob waiting 24 hours after the offer was made for a scholarship. He, he finally said yes, and he was never going to go anywhere else. I thought it was pretty touching to hear Bob yeah. tell us a story about when Derek passed away, that Sterling was very young, and he embraced him. He brought him in. He wanted him in the locker room. He wanted him to come around the team and, and uh, had no idea one day that this young Sterling would end up being a, a football player that he would end up recruiting. 
Uh, second down, they hand it to Ford. He's hit hard. Now, yeah, Stoops wanted to make sure the, his assistants also saw what he saw, that he wasn't favoring Sterling Shepard in the recruiting process because he felt so much for his dad. They also, no, 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 coach, he, this guy can play. Yeah, Sign him. Once he became a sophomore in high school and they brought him in for a camp and everybody looked at him and, and he said, well, okay, what do you guys think of, of young Sterling, who they've been seeing around the, the football offices and the games all these years? And they said, I'll take him on my side of the ball. And the receiver coach said, no, no, no I'll take him over here. And then Bob knew that he had a great player. Third and eight. Volunteers desperately in need of a stop here. They clock down at four. Not going to have time to get it off when they call timeout. Night a little hot, but they were trying to make a late change to the call. Better to spend one on third and eight. Oklahoma up 20. Looks like the Garcia's got a new car. What'd they get? I don't know. Thousand. There have been so many overtures, Kirk, over the years. You know, Florida, where he was a defensive coordinator. Notre Dame, perhaps the Cleveland Browns. But he's, he's stuck around. Can't believe it's been 16 years yeah, he's been a head coach here. He's moved. He's, at, he's in his third house here in Norman, but he's, he's stayed in the job. On third down. Knight, well protected, delivers over the middle, but he overthrew Shepard. The rare times tonight when number three has been targeted and hasn't caught it. Boy, he had all kinds of time back there, and this is this is the part of his game that's just only going to improve. He starts to his left, he comes back because of the time that he has, and Shepard's coming right through the middle there, and that's a tough, that would have been a tough catch because the middle linebacker AJ Johnson's there, but the accuracy. The consistency from an accuracy standpoint is the area where, again, Trevor Knight making his eighth career start tonight. He's going to get better and better, more consistent in that area. Pressure. Barnett gets it away as a short kick bounces left alone by Sutton. And Tennessee will take over at the 33. Talked about Bob Stoops against the SEC because it's been such a big storyline. It began with a bowl loss to Ole Miss in 99. Arkansas was able to get them. But notice the three wins against Alabama. Two in the regular season and, of course, the Sugar Bowl. Florida and LSU beat him for BCS titles. I think he and his program really needed that win, not just because it was Alabama. They needed a signature win and a big win for Bob and for this program to kind of springboard them into this year. He's a 17 point underdog in New Orleans. Play action fake. Worley now pitches it along the sidelines. Incomplete. Trying to fight back for the underthrown ball was Josh Smith. But again, it's trying to find a matchup that he likes. Worley trying to find Josh Smith against a safety. That's the matchup you want to try to find. It's not just trying to get the ball out to the receivers against the corners where it's a pretty even matchup, but if you get Josh Smith or another inside slot receiver matched up man to man against Hayes or Thomas, they've got to try to take that. On fake, push you again. Worley trying to stay alive, but he can't get away. Stryker and Quentin Hayes were there. Safety it's, and the outside linebacker combining. It's the same blitz that we've seen, not just for Stryker coming, but also you're seeing Hayes coming off the edge. And again, you're dealing with a couple true freshmen on the right side of the offensive line, a tight end who's a true freshman. There are three true freshmen on that play on the right side of the offensive line trying to deal with the complexity of this Oklahoma defense and the pressure that they're showing them. It's the fifth sack, the second for Hayes. He earlier forced the fumble on third to have pressure again. Striker one more time hitting the quarterback after the incompletion. Striker is a great name for a guy who loves to come off the edge and hit somebody. No doubt. And here he is coming off the edge again. Coleman Thomas, that right tackle. He's saying, guys, they didn't move this fast last year on the high school field. Watch how quick he gets by him. Stryker is one of the more versatile players in the country. When you watch him, you look at him, you think he's undersized. He is. He's 220 pounds. He drops out in the flat. He blitzes. Offensive linemen cannot deal with his suddenness when he blitzes off to the edge. The effort and the energy is called the heartbeat of this defense. As you said, for much more than a pass rusher, although he does that very, very well. Here's the high punch they can... By Shepard, a fair catch up near midfield and midway in the third quarter. Sooners back to work. 
Celebrating its 10th year, sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets, Allstate makes contributions to the participating university's general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kicks. Since 05, Allstate's contributed more than $3.4 million in scholarship funds. Lonely Tennessee fan, in the middle of all that crimson. There's a Tennessee section here. He must have. That's not it. He must have missed out on that ticket. Them in the end zone. They don't get many visitor seats here in Norman, that's for sure. So Samaji Piran, the talented, physical, true freshman tailback, is behind Knight. And they give it to him. You can tell he is a load. He's the guy that was involved in that controversial non-fumble, which the replays officials looked at, ended up resulting in a touchdown for Oklahoma subsequently. His first carry since that play. Again, just continuing to rotate these backs in. You wonder later in the year if somebody will emerge as kind of the go-to guy. But uh, here early in the year, all three getting equal opportunity to get their hands on the football. He ran again. A physical guy. Jalen Reeves Mathis, an excellent linebacker. Barnett, together, they're able to just get a hold of him, but it's a first down. And this offensive line is a veteran group doing a great job of, when they run the football, of not only being able to hold their blocks at the point of attack on the defensive line, but they're also getting up to those linebackers now, yes. trying to wear them down. Stoops told Heather he wanted more running in the second half, and we're getting that. This is a serious test, this possession for the Tennessee defense. Down 20. Knight checks to a throw, delivers over the middle. Blake Bell couldn't get his hand on it. Cameron Sutton was coming at him quickly. You know, that one, he came off a little bit too quickly. To his right, out to the field, he had three receivers, and Deron Neal cleared, and he was all alone underneath the Tennessee coverage would have easily picked up a first down. He actually was looking that way and just came off of it and decided, I don't know if he predetermined he wanted to throw that football or not. He threw in the tight coverage when he had a wide open receiver. Loss in motion. The quarterback keeps it and slides down short of a first down. You need four. You can see the quickness. Very quick first couple steps for Knight. We saw it on a touchdown run. Extra dimension of this offense. He's got such live legs, Chris. You know, they, when they motion a back out of the backfield and go empty, like so many of these offenses from today, you're going to see a quarterback who has quickness usually run the football, and that time he did. Blake Bell, of course, had power as a runner last year, but the quickness combined with the accuracy throwing. Sooners haven't had that in a while. This is Ross trying to get the corner. You see the speed. He's able to make a gain out of what looked was, was going to be a loss, but it's going to be fourth down. Yeah, two defenders trying to chase him down. Two, two outside linebacker defensive end type, type of players. <clears throat> Excuse me, Corey Vereen. He's got some quickness as a defensive lineman, but not quick enough to be able to chase down Alex Ross. Stoops thought about it for a second. They need two yards in this fourth down. And instead, they're going to send out the reliable Michael Honeycutt. It's a career long is what 50 yeah, this is right at 53 now Oklahoma is going to spend its second time out of the half so we'll see if Honeycutt can add to the lead at OU you become See if Bomb Soups changes his mind. Yeah, here comes the offense back out here on fourth and two. So no field goal attempts. Would have been right at Honeycutt's career long. A breeze at his back. Soups will trust the offense here. This could be very deflating for Sooners to move the sticks, keep this Tennessee defense on the field. They have to be beginning to wear down. Now Tennessee calling a timeout. You know, expecting the field goal team to come out there. Supes brought the offense back, and Butch Jones spends the first of his timeouts in the half. Heather? 
Well, guys, Justin Worley's last play on offense was a rough one. He went down hard, and Butch Jones actually just came over to check on his quarterback, who told him, my head snapped back, but I'm okay. Teammates checked in with him, but Justin didn't receive any medical attention, and he is good to go on the next offensive series. All right, thank you. There's the hit by Stryker, and the head hit off field. Whiplash. A lot of times, you know, in this era of concussions and, and the awareness of concussions, a lot of times when a quarterback gets sacked, it's not the hit, but it's, you know, that momentum of your head coming back and hitting the surface. Look at his eyes there, Kirk. He said, I mean, he, he knew what he was getting into tonight with that line. I mean, Tennessee knew it was going to be a, a challenging game for them offensively because of still trying to get some experience up front. But I said previous play, they had three true freshmen, if you included the tight end, on the right side of the offensive line. You got Eric Stryker blitzing him. You know it's going to be a long night. On fourth down, it's Keith Ford to the left of Knight, and now Shepard comes in motion. Wow. Well, eventually we're going to run this fourth down play. But this is the third timeout in the sequence. Timeout open the suspense is building. That is their last timeout of the half. That will be a 30 second timeout. He doesn't figure maybe to need him at this point at least. Well, he's 20. frustrated. He's frustrated with. Either the communi communication from the sideline or whatever it might be. I, I can't wait to see what's going to happen yeah. on fourth and two yeah. after the build-up here. Huh? I don't know. They didn't get the right play in or the right formation. I wonder if Tennessee's going to raise them another timeout here. Why not? <laughs> Let's make it four in a row. A little smile. For him, that's a huge smile during a game. <laughs> All right, Coach, what have we got cooked up? Different look now to the formation after the timeout. It's Dimitri Flowers, the big 244-pound freshman to the right of Knight. Now they motion forward. And it's a shovel pass into traffic. It's incomplete. Incomplete. Well, they knew. Barnett got there. Chris, when Dimitri Flowers comes into the game because he is such a good athlete as a fullback and he has such good hands, they motion Ford out just to try to use as a decoy. Once he clears out, now you just got to lock in. You got to, you know, you have a quarterback trying to stretch you horizontally. He's running just with the line of scrimmage, trying to bait you almost before he ditches it underneath to his fullback. But uh, Tennessee's defense saw that coming the whole time with Flowers checked into the game, and that play really didn't have much of a chance after all that with the timeouts. After all that, Volunteers get the ball back, trying to cut into the lead here. 546 in the third quarter. NC defense has made some mental mistakes. You talked about the coverage bust occasionally, but all in all, they've really given up 400 yards. It feels like they've done a decent job. They sure have. It could be a lot worse. They throw it far side. It's a low throw and Heather's report there about Worley's head hitting the ground and the, just the way his eyes looked. And it's two for his last ten now. Well, Chris, it's it's not just that one hit. That was the, the 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 hit was big. It's the culmination of just the entire game. Two and a half quarters now of getting pressured and getting hit on quite a few plays. But he's again, this kid is showing a lot of toughness tonight. And second down, pressured again, backpedaling and just throws it away. And duel away and Mr. Stryker one more time well, in the area. Well, Stryker this time is picked up because Marlon Lane comes out to help out to the right. He, or I'm sorry, Jalen Hurd's going to come out to help out with the blitz. Problem is, you're going to leave another true freshman isolated one-on-one -on -one now. So the one-on-one -on -one matchup's either going to be outside with Stryker or in this case to the inside with Robertson, a true freshman trying to pick up that block. It's the, yeah. You're either going to lose to the outside or you're going to lose to the inside in these one-on-one -on -one matchups. And a true freshman versus senior defensive tackle usually didn't work out too well for no. the young guy. Third and ten. And Tennessee will spend another timeout as Oklahoma was showing more pressure and the crowd was getting all revved up. But, and, and he's talking about the play clock. And it, if they didn't get that timeout, the, it was going to be a delay of game. We don't question Worley's toughness at all. He's proven that. But you wonder, Kirk, if the wear and tear beginning to pile up, the mental mistake there. Absolutely. And this is a great look again at the freshman, the true freshman right tackle, Coleman Thomas bouncing to the outside to help with Stryker. 
Worley getting hit again. Got a forearm up to the face by that time. If you watch Oklahoma defense this year, you're going to see them do this to a lot of quarterbacks. Chris brought it up earlier. We both did about Alabama and A.J. McCarron. A.J. McCarron got hit a lot when he played this defense in the Sugar Bowl. So it's not just that, wow, they've got a lot of true freshmen. That obviously adds to it. But wait till the Sooners play the entire 2014 season. You're going to tune in and watch them play. You're going to see them do this to a lot of offenses. They're strong in the interior with Phillips and Tapper and Dule. And they've got such quickness with Grissom and Stryker on the outside. And then they're creative with how they want to come after you. It's, it's, it's just a lethal combination. Sooners waving their arms, asking for more crowd noise on third and ten. Worley stands and delivers incomplete, a catchable ball across midfield, but Pig Howard couldn't come up with it. Fourth down. After all this kid's been through, he knows what's coming. It's third and long. Are you kidding me? He knows he's going to get pressure. It's a stun up front. They, they're coming right, closing in on it. He puts that ball right on the money. Right on the money. Good coverage by Julian Wilson. Gets in there with that right hand to knock the ball loose. That is a heck of a throw by Justin Worley, considering everything he's been through. Eight point for Matt Dar. And it's a low kick. Bounces around dangerously near an Oklahoma player. The Volunteers hoping it touched the man. No signal yet at the 30-yard line. Now they signal Tennessee ball. Yeah, it, Chris, it looked like that hit an Oklahoma and player. Steven Parker was down there. Yeah. He did not have his eyes on the ball. He was trying to block a man. Hit his shoulder. It was a low kick. Of course, though, the opportunity to review this, but the recovery made by Reeves Maben, the starting outside linebacker down there covering the punt. Another look. Watch his right shoulder. It looks like it hits him right on the arm. Right there. Yep. Ball's up in the air. Now it's a free ball at this point. So After the bounce, it came up off the shoulder. It's a mental mistake. Shepard's yelling, Peter, 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 meaning get out, get out of the way, get out of the way. Parker doesn't get out, and then the awareness by the Tennessee cover unit to be able to come up with a football and give Worley in the ball's offense a pretty good field position. Second turnover by Oklahoma. They will review it to see if there was Should be pretty enough quick. to overturn it, but I think it did, after it hit the turf, come up and hit Parker on the right shoulder, right? There, yeah. you can see the ball change no, direction. No doubt. No doubt about it. It was a low punt. Those are always tricky, bouncing around, and the guy's trying to make the blocks, not aware of it. The return man, Chevy, you see his arms? Not only are his arms moving, he's yelling, Peter, 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 meaning clear out, clear out, clear out. And James Maven is right there shoving on him. Yep. In very alert play. By the time Parker probably heard Shepard yelling, it was already too late. See, he's engaged there. Now he's hearing it. Now he starts to try to get out of the way, and it already hit him. And Shepard knew it. You could see him begin yeah. to move forward and try to recover it. Yeah. Definitely hits him right there. So Tennessee. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. First down. Tennessee's going to have the ball here at the 30-yard line of Oklahoma. 5-24 in the quarter, down 20. Desperately in need of seven here. I think you got to look for those matchups with Pig Howard and Marquez North, number eight, with his size at 6'4 in this area. Ball up in the air. He is very, very dangerous to try to match up with one on one. The Worley in the passing game have not been clicking in the third quarter at all. Pressure it again. Dumps it off short. Hurd is going to be corralled for a big loss. Yeah, Oklahoma felt this coming the whole way. They brought a pressure with Hayes. Strikers out there. You know, I, I think that's one of those cases. There's the versatility of Eric Stryker. You think he's just going to rush the quarterback? He shows like he's going to blitz. He starts to feel that they're setting up a screen. That's great instincts by Stryker that time. Out of the space, out of the space, making a play. It's a seven-yard loss on first down. Worley pressured. Ball comes out. He jumps it on the 40. Striker is just a, a nightmare in there again. And 
Tapper was there as well. Has he ever been has he ever been well protected in this half? Has there been pressure every single pass? Attempt? I think Stryker's trying to strike a pose here tonight. I mean, this guy has been all over the field. And Worley has been under pressure. Grab the if, quarterback's leg here. If he doesn't, Chris, if he doesn't get the ball out of his hands within two and a half seconds, number 19's going to be in the backfield. He ruled that his arm was coming forward. Incomplete pass. See how he's walked out over Josh Smith. Now he's going to show. Now he's up to the line of scrimmage. Here he comes. Come after him again. It's another sack. Stryker may have gotten the face mask that time. He came looping around. Tapper was there again. Maybe the penalty is on the defensive end to wipe out that sack. Yeah, it was on Tapper. Personal foul. Face mask. Number 99 of the defense. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Penalties have wiped out two sacks of the total would be even higher tonight. Yeah, and I, and I think with Tapper, who's who's a guy that's played a lot of football, I think part of that was Worley actually trying to avoid contact, lowered his helmet, and when he did that, Tapper's hand was already getting ready to engage in what he thought was the midsection of Worley. They ended up grabbing a face mask instead, and the balls catch a break and get the first down. And at the 21. Worley gets to that quick left side. Catch made, and North fights inside the 10-yard line. So it's first and goal. See what happens when they don't pressure? Soft coverage, Worley's able to throw, receiver gets a free release off the line of scrimmage. That's not the M.O. of Oklahoma. If Oklahoma, they walk up tight on these wide receivers, and they bring pressure with Quentin Hayes, the safety, and Eric Stryker. That's where they've been able to disrupt the timing and the rhythm of Justin Worley. It's the third catch for North is split out wide now. He's a very tough red zone matchup problem at 6'4", bottom of the screen. Senior show pressure up the middle. Heard moves forward for three. To the tempo and the pace of this game for Butch Jones is true freshman. The offensive linemen that are out there with two tight ends who are true freshmen. The running back you just saw run the football, Jalen Hurd. Highly touted five-star recruit that Butch Jones is able to lure into Knoxville. And imagine how fast this game is moving and how much they're growing up tonight before they get ready for SEC play. Second and goal. North in motion. Takes it, but pursued. Hand drop for a loss. I understand what they're trying to do here with, with Pig Howard. It's just too fast a defense. It, it's, the, the play took so long to develop. Once you see Pig Howard coming in motion, look how quick Stryker first gets his hands on him. Quentin Hayes is there, and there's four other jerseys there for the Oklahoma defense. They saw that before the play even started, where the football was going. They saw it on take 20. Yeah. That play the volunteer. So it's third and goal. All back at the 13. Worley rolls out. Team close to the line of scrimmage, throws it out of the end zone. And very close to crossing the line, try to get it to North in the back. So fourth and goal. He's trying to buy as much time as he could there, Chris. Uh, at that time, again, they, the amount of time that he had, you would think that somebody would be able to break open, but Mike Stoops, who's been pressuring all night, this time keeps the secondary, and he had six defensive backs on the field. They all sat back in coverage, and... Worley eventually tried to squeeze one in, but North, of course, didn't have any room to make the catch. So the true freshman, Aaron Medley, from 31 yards. What a shock. Another freshman. Yeah. <laughs> All over the place. Not what Tennessee wanted after the turnover on the punt. A 17-point deficit. Well, this has been a courageous display from Worley. Came out hot. Good first half with the pressure again and again and again hitting him time after time and it takes a toll on a quarterback not just physically but i think emotionally and the confidence that you want to have I, I, it, justin worley knew the entire week what he was going to face tonight and now he's living it and i'll tell you if you're a tennessee fan and you're watching this game you've got to be incredibly proud of what you've seen from your quarterback and a guy that's still trying to establish himself as the guy i think he's taken some huge steps tonight as the leader of this offense
one thing that hasn't helped them, volunteers haven't been able to run the ball at all. Obviously, when you got all that speed on the edge, what teams try to do in this conference against Stryker is run right at a guy like that. What have you seen overall from OU's defense looking forward? Speed, deception, power, versatility. Uh, this is, I think, one of the best defenses in college football. I, I really do. I think Mike Stoops has a defense that he changed the scheme last year. They're in their second year now running. I think they understand it better. I think they're attacking. They're, they're, they're very sound, even though they're aggressive. So there's a lot to like about this defense as they move forward and get ready for Big 12 play. There's a short kickoff. And coming up the field, it is Alex Ross. Picks his way, still alive, trying to fight forward, wrestled out finally about the 28-yard line. Major League Baseball coming down to the wire and join ESPN tomorrow night. The Orioles taking on Derek Jeter and the Yankees, the captain in his final season. Presented by Taco Bell. 8 o'clock Eastern, also on the watch ESPN app. So certainly for Tennessee, three points not what they needed. Cut into the lead. Now 17 points as Oklahoma goes back to offense. Three hundred yard night for Trevor Knight. 18 of 29, 304, the one touchdown and the interception. There's a handoff inside. There's Keith Ford for a short game. Is that zone read again? And, you know, it's, it's option football when you defend that, which means discipline, assignment football. It's so easy to kind of start to cheat down on Keith Ford because he's starting to pick up some big yards. And when you do, just when you start to cheat too much, Trevor Knight's going to pull it and pull it around the corner. Ford's got it again. And Ballou, the tackler in the backfield, and sprints to the sideline. It's Danny O'Brien who was out on the edge there. Good pretty, boy. Yeah, pretty good effort there by Danny O'Brien. These guys are holding up there against this tempo offense, and because they, they're slanting so much, occasionally they're slipping by and getting a crease within that offensive line and shooting a gap. On third down, the center's just three of nine. That's an incompletion over the head of Duran Neal. That's one thing that Suits and the offensive staff won't love about tonight's game. They haven't been very efficient on third down at all. Yeah, 30 percent. That's not good at all. I mean, and, and that's something that Tennessee, they talk that they have to have an ability to get Oklahoma off the field. If you take away the miscues, the kind of blown assignments for this defense where they've given up some big plays and touchdowns, We've said it all night long. You've got to give Tennessee a lot of credit for the way their defense has hung in there and given themselves at least a chance to try to get back in the game. Jib Barnett, they come after it. Let's get it away. And that's Cameron Sutton calling for a fair catch at the 32-yard line. Second one in a row. Yeah. They almost got it. Well, stay tuned after the game, except on the West Coast. For your late local news on most of these ABC stations. Over on ESPN Sports Center on the highlights of the day in sports. Some surprises again in college football. Boston College up 13 on USC and Chestnut Hill, the team we saw win at Stanford last week. It's amazing. We, we've seen some teams that have struggled with prosperity. Virginia Tech going back home after beating Ohio State, losing to East Carolina. Now USC, they go up into the top 10 in this week's rankings, and they're down big right now against Boston College. And first down, they hand it off to Hurd. And the freshman breaks into the secondary. Jalen Hurd shows the speed, not shoved out until he gets to the 25 yard line. And now Tennessee threatening again. Watch the true freshman, the tight end Daniel Helm, leading the way, picks up the block on Dominique Alexander. And this is what Tennessee fans are so excited about. Hurd is 6'3, 227 pounds, true freshman. Now he'll line up down here in the slot at the bottom of the screen. But this guy is the future of Tennessee's fo football's uh, offensive team. He got 43 yards, hadn't done anything running the ball all night. It's 
Gillespie trying to break free there. Striker, again, not just a pass rusher, flying all over the field, making another tackle. By being able to run the football a little bit, I mean, that, that's one play they've had. But obviously, it slows down Striker. Does he ever get tired, number 19? No. Oh, no, no, no. He's going to go all night. He's the energizer by it. But they don't have to respect the running game until that play, so it allows them to just pin their ears back and attack early in this offensive line. It's a nice run by Hurd. Maybe it can slow down Oklahoma's defense a bit. They rush four, and really does have time. Takes a shot to the end zone. Throws it into good coverage. A battle for the football. And Zach Sanchez comes up with it. He won the battle against Jason Kroom. And this guy just has a knack for making plays. A risky throw by Worley, but this is a very, very athletic interception. Well, they'll probably take another look at this. Look at the focus. This is the playmaker of the defense, Zach Sanchez. Never gives up on the football, gets his foot down, completes the, the catch all the way through. That is a heck of a play. Keep in mind that Kroon is 6'5". What you didn't see there, maybe we'll take another look at it, is the way Sanchez used his body to position himself to be able to make the play. He didn't let Kroon get to it. In the replay, we'll take another look. Watch how he pins the ball with that right arm against the shoulder pad, then brings the hand Incredible. up, foot still inbounds. Kirk, if it stands, his fifth pick in the last six games. He's become the playmaker, as I said, Chris. Had a, another guy who had a great sugar bowl. Just a guy that has a knack for that ability to make big plays. And it will stand after reviewing. So a huge takeaway for Oklahoma. They try to guard this lead, and they'll go back to work in the final seconds of the third quarter here. A short game for Ford. What I was impressed with was not just the way he pinned the ball against his shoulder pad, but how he kept Kroom away from the football. I mean, that ball is basically thrown up for Kroom to have a chance to be able to make a play on it because of his size. And, and I just love how Zach Sanchez, the technique that he uses. Watch him, watch him use his body. See how he's slowing Kroom down? He's not letting Kroom get to the football. And he slows him down to be in position for the football to come up with by far one of the greatest interceptions we've seen this year in the early season. Norman Sooner is protecting a 17-point lead. They've got it deep in their own end, second and nine. Knight had missed in his last five passes, but a short completion here, and will set up third down. Oh, Rocky Kalmus. Remember him, the Sooner yeah. linebacker? It was a time when he was chasing down ball carriers. Now he comes out of the smoke here. Fired the folks up <laughs> between the third and fourth quarter. End of the third quarter. He was fired up, man. He was ready to go. Give him some shoulder pads. Part of that championship team back in 2000. Two-time Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year. Sooners need seven on third down. Knight fires over the middle, incomplete. Tried to get it to K.J. Young. No flag. Knight was hit by Owen Williams after the throw. Yeah, Jordan Williams has done a nice job, and Owen Williams comes in more athletic when they get to third down. Now Oklahoma just 3 of 11 on third down. So they're winning this game. They control this ball game, but they're going to have a lot of work to be able to show these players about being able to execute and give themselves a better chance of picking up first downs. If you're going to run tempo, you've got to be able to convert at a higher rate on third down. That's the whole idea behind that is keeping a defense on the field to wear them down. Knight has missed on six of his last seven passes. Here's the punt. Fielded. And the spin away is Sutton. Covered at the 38. To Chris Cotter for an update. All right, Chris, time for the Dr. Pepper Conference update. The Pac-12 favorite in trouble but fighting back. Cody Kessler, the easy pitch and catch with Nelson Aguilar here. Trojans down six, but BC has possession. About four minutes left to go in this one, Chris. Top 10 team in trouble on the road. Keep an eye on that one. Thank you, Chris. Let's see the impact that Oklahoma pressure tonight. And striker off to, to the right. And hand it to Marlon Lane, who dives forward to the 45 yard line. That's going to drive Mike Stoops crazy. Stryker is a great player, but 
And the, the last couple series, we've seen Tennessee have just nowhere to go. <laughs> How frustrated he is. You'd think he's down 27 to 10. But they haven't been able to run much at all tonight. In the last two series, these backs have had a little bit more room. Well, he pitches it, and it's a screen, and a tackle made at the first down. Yark marker again by Stryker. You think Stryker's going to blitz, right? He's going to try to get in there, and here he comes. All of a sudden, he sees the quarterback's going to get rid of the ball. He's not going to give up on the play. He's going to chase down the receiver. Smith did get the first down. Yeah, but I, I just think it's his attitude. He, he really represents this Oklahoma defense with a relentless attitude. Worley fires across, catch made, complete short of the first down is Marquez North. Another look at how active Stryker has been tonight. Yeah, he has. I mean, he, he's been the guy that Mike Stoops has decided to turn loose, with, much like he does most of uh, most games that they play. He's undersized at about 220 pounds. He, he's built like a safety, and yet he does a great job of being able to get around these offensive tackles and being so elusive and so quick. Worley on first down, runs out of time, and throws it incomplete. Josh Malone took a detour on this play. I don't know if he didn't expect to be in the in the route. Because the quarterback, as he dropped back, Worley's looking to the play side to the right, and nothing was there, so he turned back to try to get the ball thrown out before he's going to get sacked, and Malone was just kind of running down the field. Again, another true freshman for the Tennessee offense out of the field. How many times have we said true freshman tonight for Tennessee? 100. There's another true freshman. Hurd breaks into the secondary, flashes the speed, and hammers down inside the 15s after doing nothing all night with the running game. Hurd has had a couple of good runs. And the left tackle this time, really good job of picking up his block. Kirby then, and also the tight end, Daniel Helm sustaining. Nice double team there. And Jalen Hurd giving us a, a preview of what's to come throughout the rest of this year and a very bright future for this Tennessee offense. Those two big runs, Kirk, and Hurd is within five yards of 100 yards tonight, averaging almost eight yards a carry. Hurd and Marlon Lane in the game. Hurd's got it again. This time it's a one-yard loss. Nowhere to run as Peterson shut him down. Well, just, just a threat of them being able to run the football can slow down the pass rush. And the other thing, and at that time, again, you're, you're still going up against those monsters in the middle there for these offensive linemen. But just the threat of that running game, Chris, and the tempo of the offense, you know, they can also wear down the Oklahoma defense. It works both ways. Sooners are rotating D linemen in there, though. And Worley, and this time they roll the pocket. He has time, and he escapes. Worley with a stiff arm brought down inside the five by Jordan Evans. Great job not giving up on the play by Justin Worley. Again, think about everything he's been through. He rolls left. There's nothing there. Instead of throwing it away, he sees an opening there and almost is able to get away from Evans and get into the end zone. But by deciding to keep the football, now look at this third down as opposed to being third and ten. Amazing how those two runs by Hurd have kind of stifled OU's pass rush. Third and two. Worley zips it across the middle in the traffic and it's intercepted by Julian Wilson. Wilson with a convoy gets a block and takes it end to end. Well, Wilson makes the play, but Jordan Evans paused it. The middle linebacker, right in the middle, reads the quarterback's eyes. Great job of recognizing the route. Gets his right hand on the football, and that's what sent it up into the air, where Wilson's able to get the interception and give Tennessee a dagger to this football game. Nice play by Wilson, but Jordan Evans set that play up. He prevented the touchdown the play before, and then he comes up with a deflection to cause that ball to go up into the air. 
They're going to review this. Did Wilson cross the plane of the goal line before he dropped the ball? Are we going to get a, a, almost a honey badger replay? Remember for LSU? Did he drop the ball before I, I he crossed he, the plane? I think he's from that angle. I think he's across, but I think it's a little bit close for Bob Stoops. North has given chase. It is right yeah. on the plane if he did cross it. Tough angle so far. Nothing where you could overturn the call. Tell me you make a play. You run 100 yards. You can't hold it just a split second longer before you're in the end yeah. zone. Yeah, he'll, he'll get he'll get an earful in a film session. I don't think I've seen I haven't seen anything yet that's going to make them turn this thing over. Without that look right down the goal line, it's difficult to see. He was very close, and again, this Big 12 replay crew has to have indisputable visual evidence to overturn the call on the field. That's a tough call for officials who are sprinting down the field to see it when they yeah. call it live. Yeah. Here, here's the linebacker right in the middle here. See, see, the, see his eyes. He's looking around. He's reading the quarterback. He's looking around to the routes, trying to feel where that ball might be going. It was an empty backfield, so it's either a quarterback draw or it's a quick throw. It's one or the other. Quarterback didn't show it. He's not, he's not going to run the ball, so right away he gets his hand in there and knocks that After ball review, loose. After review, the ruling, we were looking to see if the runner dropped the ball prior to crossing the goal line. He did not. Touch that. So the pick six stands for Julian Wilson. Worley has thrown interceptions in the end zone the last couple of possessions, but that will be a teaching moment. Yeah. Because they would like him to hold the ball a little bit longer after making such a great play. No doubt. No doubt. He'll, he'll, he'll get plenty from Mike and Bob Stoops when they review this game on the film. And it cuts into the PAT. And Oklahoma's defense comes up with a huge play. Julian Wilson from one goal line to the other, barely with the football. And Oklahoma stretches it to 34-10. Alabama week. Needs, Kirk, in 1945. Feet matched by Wilson just now. Kickoff bounces to the end zone. Back to Chris Cotter for an update. Chris, UCLA and Texas in a close game in Arlington. Tyrone swoops. This is his second touchdown pass of the night. John Harris hauls this one in. Remember, Brett Huntley exited this game with an elbow injury in the first half. Horns by four late. Very, very rough night for L.A. football. As USC goes down to Boston College, Brett Huntley hurt earlier, and the Bruins up against it now, trailing late. That is two big losses for both teams in Southern California, both thinking that they had a chance. They're still you know, thinking about trying to get to a playoff, struggling in non-conference play. As Jim Morris Sr. once said, playoff? Talking about playoff? His son knew that the Bruins hadn't really responded very well to the hype. He wanted them to play as underdogs. Easier said than done. But UCLA is that to with some heroics there for the Bruins late in Arlington? Yeah, it looks like you saw it there. <laughs> Don't put a fork in LA yet tonight. <laughs> Second and six after the four-yard game. Worley gets a shot. Far side delivers complete. And breaking free is north across midfield. That's a great throw. That's a great throw again by Justin Worley. A little bit late, thrown back. You know, he'd love to throw this towards the sideline. And then Sanchez, if he's in better position, can make a play on the ball. But because the ball is thrown on time, even though it's a little bit behind his receiver, makes it tough for Sanchez to get there. And Sanchez, instead of playing the receiver, he plays the ball, and that's what allowed North to make the play and still get upfield for more yards. And Sanchez, who made that acrobatic interception in the end zone late in the third quarter, was down on the field. Remember, he fought through a shoulder injury from last week to be ready to go this week. Seems to be okay. All that 
Worley has been through Kirk all the times he's been hit and harassed and a couple interceptions in the end zone still up making throws like this. Yeah and, and again what a concentration by North to be able to make that catch Sanchez you know I don't know what he may have hurt but he got up pretty quick and he'll be back at, I'm sure right back out in the field. Balls in sooner territory ended up inside and that's third shaking a tackle is Marlon Lane. The ball running game did absolutely nothing in the first half. Much more effective after halftime. Well, really, the last last couple series, they've been able to get uh, both Jalen Hurd and Marlon Lane a little bit more room, and it's, you know, that, that would have been great to see for Tennessee if they did that in the first half to slow down Stryker in this pass rush that Worley's had to deal with. This is Hurd cutting it back. He'll get a first down about the 38-yard line. Stryker tackle him again. Yeah, they had room to run into the middle, but look to the outside. Stryker's the guy that chases the play down from behind. Otherwise, Jalen Hurst able to get another maybe 5 or 10 yards. This guy's all over the field. 200, I keep saying it, 220 pounds. It's a relentless player with tremendous instincts. First down throw from Morley. Fires far side. North broken up. No defended there. Looks like Jordan Thomas, a freshman for Oklahoma that time out there. Been seeing Zach Sanchez out on the field. He'll now check back into the game, but the freshman Thomas was out there by himself against Jason Kroom and held his own on an island. Moving on second and now fires far side again. Once again into traffic looking for north. It'll be third and ten. Volunteers just five of fifteen on third down tonight. to bring pressure this time. Yep, they're going to rush five. Worley really gets it out quickly far side, but North can't get away. Very sure tackle by Sanchez, who is slow to get up. You wonder if he's aggravated that, that shoulder problem. He held on to the physical receiver well that time. Yeah, he's, he's fighting through some pain there to be able to stay out there. And remember, North, with his size, is tough to bring down. 6'4", 225-pound receiver. And go for it on fourth and five. Has to. You can see he's just favoring that right arm. Really looks left immediately. Fires that direction. Almost intercepted again. And Quentin Hayes was thinking about a pick six of his own. But what, what Oklahoma is doing a good job of is the awareness of the down and distance and where the first down marker is. They are breaking on the football. And they understand the Tennessee, they need to get three or four yards. Their coverage is right at three or four yards. You can see both strikers out there. Quentin Hayes is out there. Everybody's staying right there. It's really, really tough for five at home. Year two won that championship. Mm -hmm. This is Piran, the physical freshman. They're trying to rip the ball out as they tried to do earlier. Rain. Barely held on to possession. But with Ford now out of the game, he went into the locker room. Now, obviously, Ross and, and Piran will have to carry the load the rest of the way. Ross is more of a slender, more explosive back, number 28, and Piran, who's in, is a more physical, true freshman who can pound it between the tackles. I'm going to use the play clock here. Piran again picks his way, and you can see the power of the young guy first down across the 44. Daryl McNeil met him close to the line of scrimmage. <laughs> he felt the brunt of it. And 245 pounds lowering his shoulder, and he is pure muscle. McNeil came in there to fill, and I mean, he got, watch 33, fill in right here. Boom. 
that snap back. They also admire that he's held on. You know, his, his vision, his cutting ability besides yeah. the power, got good speed for a back that size as well. Well, they, Oklahoma always seems to have backs, you know? I mean, they all, they've always got two or three really good backs. These guys are willing to, to share the load. You don't come to Oklahoma if you want to carry it 30 times a game. Maybe Adrian Peterson did, but typically they like to spread it around. The flag is down. I mean, so the best OU teams in Bob Stoops is 16 years. I know Adrian Peterson was unique, but in most cases, it's where they've had two or three guys back oh, there rotating. Offense number 77, 10-yard penalty, first down. Deontay Savage is the first holding call on the Sooners tonight. I think for Oklahoma to be able to, to have a, a magical season, the, the big issue to me is can they stay healthy on the offensive line? I mean, they've, they've got skill. They've got a quarterback now that's making good decisions. They've been depleted over the last few years up front by the end of the year. They've got to stay healthy up front. He ran again, makes the cut, lowers the boom, sheds tacklers, still running deep in the Tennessee territory, and you can see the reason for all the hype. Remember last time, 33, McNeil had a chance to make a tackle and he felt it? How about this time? He's going to come up. Here he is. Oh, he's not even thinking of wrapping up. He just kind of threw his right shoulder and lowered his head and hoped. I mean, you've got to wrap up. You say it's like a business decision, right? You go yeah. to make a tackle. Yeah, right? well, here, well the, remember the last play he came up and he got buckled. This time he comes up, he tries to go low, and instead of wrapping up, he just lowered his shoulder and just kind of took a knee, hoping he'd go down. It's 31 more yards. We're seeing an excellent duel of hyped true freshman tailbacks. Jalen Hurd for Tennessee, and now P. Ryan imposing himself here in the fourth quarter for Oklahoma. Ford wrap up. Coming up next, an eventful night. As UCLA, Kirk did come back late to beat Texas in Arlington. Jerry Neuheisel, Rick's son, with Hundley out injured, engineering a game-winning drive to break amazing. Texas' hearts. Yeah, that's amazing. Rick's got to be fired up for that. Not only is Alma Mater gets a win, but his son gets a chance to step Remember in. Remember meeting there. with him? He was a young high school kid hanging out with Rick yeah. before he chose yep. his college. This is Alex Ross, the speedy young sophomore back, taking his turn inside the 30. Such a different feel when Ross gets the football. He's, uh, he, he is a guy that can take it to the house in a hurry. He's not going to necessarily run over you, but he'll run around you and by you. Another one of those third downs, though, Kirk. Oklahoma will, will take a look at what they did not do well on third down tonight. And then study the tape of this one, just three for 11. This is Knight rolling out. A completion made, but hammered short of the first down. Cam Sutton came up and lowered the boom on Neal. So it's fourth and three. We've seen a lot of hits, a lot of big hits here in this second half. That play, again, it, was, it, it took a while. It was a play that was designed right in front of Sutton. He was just almost sitting there waiting for that ball to be thrown. And you know, quarterbacks have to see a flat defender out there waiting. And you don't want to throw it and leave your receiver out to dry. And that's what that time Trevor Knight did. So Honeycutt is two for two tonight. Both of them inside 30 yards. Price from 45. And it's blocked. Rarely does he miss a field goal. Tennessee makes the block, and Oklahoma will just run down, down there and, and touch it, so it can't be returned. So, Butch Jones' special teams come up with a play. The lead is still 24, four minutes to play. And not only the pressure, they've also created some turnovers. They've got created three turnovers, gotten the ball back to Trevor Knight. Trevor Knight's taken advantage of some miscues and minnow errors from Tennessee's defense, and they've come up with some big plays. Knight's thrown the ball now for over 300 yards, but at the same time, give Tennessee credit for, you know, it's 34 to 10. Their defense mm -hmm. has stepped up and made plays as well. Oklahoma's had the two interceptions in this half, but not an overwhelming offensive display for the Sooners after halftime. Short game by Marlon Lane. Wiles will have a bye week and then a very important SEC East game against Georgia now with extra urgency for the Dogs coming off to loss in Columbia today. Being 
be between the hedges after a bye week next week. And second down. There's a handoff inside again, a short gain for Lane. Now, this isn't just about this game tonight for both of these teams. It's about what you can do tonight to compete. And in Oklahoma's case, you win. You, you try to learn from it, and you try to get better, obviously. There's plenty of room for Bob Stoops' bunch to, to, to improve, especially on the offensive side of the ball. And if you're Butch Jones, you're looking at this. Again, they didn't come in trying to have a, a, a game where they walked away saying, hey, guys, good try, moral victory. They wanted to come in and win this game, so they're disappointed. But at the same time, I think they learned a lot about themselves and where they can continue to grow with this young football team, one of the youngest you'll see in the SEC. There's another carry for Lane on third down. He's near the marker at the 38. Oklahoma, meanwhile, doesn't play another home game until mid-October when Kansas State comes in. And they go to West Virginia, to TCU, and then have the Red River game in Dallas on the 11th. So long drought between home games, and they'll dive into that nine-game conference schedule. Tennessee is short of a first down, and the punt team is out there. With as good as their defense is, they're, they're going to be really, really tough to beat this year. Mm -hmm. There's a reconsider. Bush had the punt yeah. team out there. Now Worley and the offense are back out there. And they did call down. it a first down, so they, they changed the call, and the offense oh. stays out there. It's just in. That was a late. <laughs> Very late. They had the, they had the fourth down on the mark. Down. Yeah. Approaching the final two minutes. And we're just feeding lane here late in the ball game. I, I was going to say, I just think Oklahoma, th th this team, we've watched these guys pretty closely for the last 15 or 16 years. They've got a different feel about them. And I think the Sugar Bowl win was, was really key in creating confidence. But I just, th I just think they've done a great job of recruiting guys that kind of are Oklahoma type of guys. Gritty, tough guys. Stryker's a great example of that. Grissom's a great example of that. These guys are, are playing as a team. This defense, because of how consistent and relentless they are, it'll be fun to see how far they can take it this year. Well coached, athletic, and a bunch of guys in the defense that have a playmaking knack. We've seen Sanchez and Wilson make huge interceptions in the second half here. Lane again tries to break free. Another first down up near midfield. And the clock taking down a minute 10 to go. And on the other side, I mean, I, yeah. Butch Jones in his last year, he signed 32 recruits. National letter of intent. He's already, I think he has room for three or four more. He's he's out on the trails, doing very, very well already. With all the verbals, they're going to sign 25 or 26 again next year. So the future is bright. It's just trying to take baby steps with a young team like this when you go into this kind of environment or when they go into the SEC in tough environments and trying to continue to grow to try to win this year, not wait for the future. Now they desperately want to make a bowl game after a succession of three straight five and seven seasons. They figure it's to be tough in Georgia. I mean, who knows? But if they're two and two, they'll, they'll have their chances. And Oklahoma, meanwhile, Kirk, winning by 24. Do they make a, a strong enough statement that this is truly an elite team and should be considered a, a playoff contender? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, as long as you play defense the way Oklahoma plays defense, you're, you're a legitimate team. I just think they got to continue to be dominant on the other side of the ball to become a complete team. So five sacks, three takeaways, and Stoops defense. Huge tonight. You put in four hours before the nine to fivers even show up. You don't commute every day. You commute every 15 minutes. And you don't drive two and